Texas have the edge over the opposing defenses? Do you think is yes? Gonna, it should be a high scoring game. You think high scoring? I, yeah, I, I think it'll be high scoring. I, I think that I think Maryland's defense has a chance. We always talk about EJ Henderson. They attack. They lead the nation with yep. interceptions with 23. I think they could step up. in North Carolina State playing at home defensively. I don't know about high school. No, I think it's going to be a high school. Terrapins game. could be 60 minutes from coming down here yeah. to South Florida, but. A tough challenge against NC State. We go now to our broadcast team at Carter Finley and throw it now to Ron Franklin. Enjoy the ball game. Drink Maryland Terrapins looking to conclude what has been nothing less than a dream season are in town to take on the NC State Wolfpack here at Carter Finley Stadium. Is there a better story in college football this year than the Maryland Terrapins? A win here tonight at the Albright Championship at the Atlantic Coast Conference. That would mean a BCS Bowl game, probably the Orange Bowl. But let me stop you right there and just say, if you think this is going to be an outright coronation here tonight, you're wrong because it is because of North Carolina State that Maryland is in the position they are in. That's after that upset win over Bobby Bowden's Florida State Seminoles last week down in Tallahassee. And I can promise you, longtime Seminole assistant Chuck Amato would love nothing more than to send a little love back toward his former mentor and upset Maryland here tonight because that would enhance NC State's position as far as a higher bowl game and also could, that's could, put Florida State back in a position to be a BCS representative for the ACC. Well, as you can tell, it has started. This place is rocking it. Mike Godfrey and Adrian Carson are going to join me when we come back from Raleigh, North Carolina. It's the Terrapins and the Wolfpack. Kickoff just moments away. So it all comes down to this. In the waning seconds, a field goal will decide it all. There's the snap. Good hold. The kick is up. It appears to be long enough. And it splits the upright right down the middle. That's as pretty as it gets. An absolutely perfect ending to a perfect day. This is Bowflex. An entire gym and one easy to use machine. Strength training with Bowflex is so effective that we guarantee you'll get the results you want in six weeks or less. One simple workout. 20 minutes a day. Three days a week. Bowflex is real. The results are real. Call right now for a free video and brochure. Bowflex, the power is yours. assistant coach. Well, he comes to Maryland, back to his alma mater, and he wins. And across the field, Chuck Amato. This is his school as well. Seven and three in home games. Chuck Amato played here and now is trying to make a mark of his own. Hi, once again, everybody. Ron Franklin. Mike Godfrey joins me. And Mike, let's both of these teams with monumental wins last week. Who has the bigger hangover? Who has to be more careful as far as stumbling this evening? Well, both of them, Ron. When you take Maryland, Ralph Friedgen said he's worried about his team being content just to be co-champions. But I think they'll play. North Carolina State with a big win at FSU. I think they have the tougher hill to climb. I'll tell you, you're going to see two running backs in this ballgame tonight that are extremely 
extremely important to their offenses. Perry and Robinson that are also awfully good. Yeah, Maryland wants to get the ball to Bruce Perry. Now he scored 10 touchdowns. They want to pitch it out to him on the option to flare him out of the backfield. Get him on the perimeter. Ray Robinson, another good running back for North Carolina State. Nine touchdowns. They want to match him up with the linebacker in the passing game. Fisher and Henderson. Remember those two names because you're two linebackers that I'm going to call their name a lot tonight because both will make a lot of tackles. Yeah, LaVar Fisher's going to have to work tonight because he has to play the option. Dive, quarterback, pitch. E.J. Henderson with 130 tackles, five sacks. North Carolina State said if we don't block him, we don't win. The weather tonight, absolutely perfect. Not a chance of rain. Cool evening. We're starting off at 60 degrees and the temperature is supposed to drop down into the 40s. Novak to kick it off. Maryland won the toss and they have diverged to the second half so it'll be North Carolina State receiving to open the ball game and it's Lamont Reed and Greg Golden back in a dual safety as you look at Novak about to kick it off for the Terrapins. Here's the kick, and this one's underway. Caught right at the sideline by Golden. Return at the middle. 25. Still fights his way, and he'll have it out to the 28-yard line. Third man in our telecast tonight, as usual. Let's go to the sideline. Adrian Carston, what do you have for us, big guy? Ryan went well for Ryan back home in Maryland. The players' expectations and dream was just simply six wins and hope for a bowl. Well, tonight, 9-1 and one, with talk of the Orange Bowl. He has found a player in his quarterback, Sean Hill, who is not afraid to admit, you know, we really didn't expect to win all those games. We didn't expect to come in here 9-1. and one. Well, here we are. ACC title is the only thing that's acceptable. My play tonight is going to prove just how much we want that Orange Bowl. Well, Ralph Friedgen comes out, and uh, he's shifting people in every direction. Now sends a man in motion, and the quick out pass goes to Dugan. That's the tight end, and North Carolina State is up to the task as country. Philip Rivers, the sophomore out of Athens, Alabama. The starter at quarterback and the remainder of the Burger King starting lineup. Ray Robinson and Coach Jackson. Brian Peterson and Jericho Cotchery, who just caught that ball. Willie Wright, who is a very fine pass-catching tight end. We'll check the offensive line in just a moment. First running play. Robinson turns it up. 35. Puts a head down, close to the first down, still fights his way. And they're going to give him forward progress to the 38. That could be enough for the first down. The offensive line. Kustra on the left side. He was the right tackle last year. Fine-looking specimen. He and Chris Colbert, the most consistent players. Mike, what about the defensive front? Yeah, good defensive front. Mike Whaley has 13 tackles for losses, which means he spends a lot of time in the offensive backfield. They stretch it out, and it's a first down. North Carolina State with the situation of huddling very close to the line of scrimmage. And when they break the huddle, they're there in about two steps and ready to go. Phillip Rivers, the sophomore. That's Cotchery in motion. Brian Peterson moves up on the right side, top of the screen. And Rivers throws this one knocked away, and that's the man in the middle, E.J. Henderson, the linebacker that Mike and I talked about just a moment ago, who was there to make the defensive play. The linebackers, Henderson, it all starts there. Leon Joe, very, very quick. How about the secondary? Yeah, two good safeties, Tony Jackson and Randall Jones. So uh, they have their work cut out for them with these NC State receivers. It is second down. Three wide receivers to the right. Rivers from a shotgun formation. They fake the run. Rivers throws this one away, incomplete. Biggest difference you'll see in NC State this year than last year under Norm Child, the offensive coordinator, who uh, 
left and went to Southern Cal is more two-back sets. Now this year, more one-back sets and put Phillip Rivers in the shotgun more. You see the numbers, 237 out of 441. 25 touchdowns and only 10 interceptions. And you see that three of those are school records. It is third down. They need to take the ball out to the 48-yard line. They roll it to the open side of the field again. Rivers in trouble, and he's going to go down. And it's Henderson, E.J. Henderson. So already on the opening series, knocks down a pass, and then is credited with a sack of the quarterback. All over the field, Ron. 130 tackles, uh, 25 tackles for losses, five sacks. He makes things happen. Herbert, to punt Herbert stands back to punt, waits for the snap at the 21, and it's Rich Parson who was back deep. Return on by Maryland as a driving spiral. Back to the 21. And really good coverage by the Wolfpack. 43 yards on the kick and only 6 yards on the return. So across the way, Sean Hill. Really, he made his big move back in the spring. He's out of Parsons, Kansas. What is called a very, very good decision maker. And the guys with him, Bruce Perry and James Lynch. Lynch should wear a number in the 70s. He weighs 270, but he's fullback. Gary and Williams, the wide receivers. Jeff Dugan is the tight end. Good look at Sean Hill. 6'3", 221 pounds. But Ralph Regan and his new staff came in, and they started working in the spring. Penalty now being stepped off against Maryland, and it's going to be back to the 11-yard line. The Friedgen said, this is my guy, you're my fella, let's go out and get him. They had receivers that were coming back. It was not as though these people were not on the same page. Gary, for instance, Julian Gary. And it's worked well for the Maryland Terrapins. But they can make history tonight. Due to the tight end, flips over to the right side. First carry by Perry. Turns it upfield. 15, still fights to the 20-yard line, and he's close to a first down. That's LeVar Fisher, who comes over to make the tackle. The offensive line for Maryland, it starts right there in the middle. Melvin Fowler, Jr. C.J. Brooks, very consistent performer at left tackle. Mike, what about the down four? Chuck Amato told me before the game, both Corey Smith and George Anderson, defensive ends against the option, have a tough task. They need to play well. He did pick up a first down, so one carry for Bruce Perry and 10 yards gained on that one. Puts it in the stomach again. Comes to the right side. 25 out very close to the 30-yard line. Terrence Holt making the stop for the Wolfpack. The linebackers for NC State. Well, LeVar Fisher out of Buford, North Carolina. He is truly outstanding. And in the secondary, the man that just made the tackle is the bell cow back there, isn't he? He really is, Terrence Holt. And, uh, you know, this secondary has a lot on their plate tonight with the option and the long passing game. Second down and short. Lynch blocking, Perry carrying, and he is going to come to the 31-yard line. This may require a measurement as well. It is very close. Yeah, talking to NC State coaches on the field before the game, they all said the same thing, Ron. They have to stop Bruce Perry. You know, stop him running the football, and he's off to a pretty good start here in this football game. Pass catching the ball in all-purpose yards because they said if he gets his yardage, we're going to get beat. Riley checks in a tailback, and he's a big one. 6'3", 218, a senior out of Corum, New York. Two tight ends at Fiddler in motion, and they give it to the young man I was just talking about, Mark Riley. And I'll tell you, for a big fella, now he puts a head down and is very rugged to stop. Patterson comes up out of the secondary to make the tackle. Now, Ron, Charlie Taff is the offensive coordinator for Maryland. And he used to be the head coach at Citadel. And he one year he had a 10-2 and two season, losing to Jim Donnan and Marshall and Youngstown State. But he's added the wishbone. We're going to see some options right here in this formation. Double slot formation by the Maryland Terrapins. 
And Hill going to go long, far sideline, and it's overthrown. Brian Williams, he was a very good defensive back over there in the corner working against Jafar Williams, and he got a hand on it. Ron, they show a formation where you, you expect the option, and uh, I liked what NC State is doing with their linebackers. They're stacking the linebackers. Here's LeVar Fisher behind the other linebacker, Pollard. Well, LeVar Fisher said that with the option this week that he was going to have a lot more on his plate, a lot more things to worry about. Draw play. Has five, has ten, picks it out across the 42-yard line, out to the 43, and he's very close to a first down before Hudson makes the tackle. Maryland returns 17 starters from last year. So this is a team that was on the verge of winning, and Ralph Friedgen and his staff have convinced them and have given them confidence. So it's another first down. Perry now four carries for a total of 30 yards. Running play, Perry. Brings it back into the middle. Over the 50-yard line, inside the 45. Ball is loose at the 43. Who got it? I think NC State has the football. Going into the pile. It's on the ground, boy. NC State football. I thought we are going to have to call the State House to get somebody to make a decision. Rodney, here's what Maryland does well. They are ahead plus 17 in the turnover margin. Now they fumble the football. Now North Carolina State gets the advantage. Bruce Berry fumbles. Now they got to make something happen. Terrence That's something Holt. they haven't done much this year. Turn the ball over. Terrence Holt caused the fumble, and Julius Patterson is the man who got on it. So let's see if the Wolfpack can take advantage of an early mistake by Maryland. Philip Rivers straight ahead with Robinson and you could see them bring that wide receiver back around Devontae Edwards will look for that play later on this evening as they'll fake it to the man going up in the middle and hand it off uh, on a reverse the turnover ratio by Maryland number two in the nation as far as takeaways at 32 and as Mike said, something they have not been played with this season, and that is putting the ball on the ground or throwing the interceptions. Quick pass goes to Robinson, turns it up, and that's going to be for short yardage. Ball is on the ground and picked up by Maryland, and that's Cox. Cox makes the recovery, and there is a flag down at the 36-yard line. J. Henderson has a tackle, has broken up a pass, and has caused this fumble if they indeed say that the ball did come out. Face mask on the wolf pack. Face mask. During the return. Show it is a turnover, and Maryland gets the ball back in very good field position. We'll take a break. 8.58 remaining. Opening quarter, no score. from Burger King. It's made hot, fresh, and juicy every time. So groove on down to Burger King for a satisfying experience.
job that makes you happy? Post your resume now. Monster.com. You the monster. Want to try that triple Lex? What the heck? I got supplemental insurance. What's that? A Lutz? No, that something something insurance. Even the best insurance doesn't give you cash for things like lost pay and other expenses. Uh, this does. What does? Aflac. Ask about it at work. We're looking for the closest shave. Oh, not his. Couldn't get the tough spots. But he did. He got total closeness with the new Remington TCT, the only shaver designed to get the tough spots. With a unique system that first trims the hard-to-get hairs, followed by three flexing foils to cut even closer. And now introducing the new Remington Rotary TCT. More flexing action than any other. The new Remington TCT shavers. Total closeness for your money back. So Maryland with a turnover, but NC State returns the favor as Robinson is hit and fumbles. And again, as we mentioned, E.J. Henderson and LeVar Fisher, two really outstanding linebackers. They've already each made very big plays. Now, LeVar was shaken up in the last series, but he's back out on the field, and we'll keep an eye on him. First down and 10, the ball just inside the NC State 30, and here comes Hill down the line of scrimmage. Almost lost the football, and that's going to go for a loss of about three yards, and it's Corey Smith who was there defensively. Here's the fumble, the, the play before, and when Maryland forces turnovers, usually they score right after the turnover. Here's just a good job by E.J. Henderson making the play on Ray Robinson. About to go under eight minutes to play in the opening quarter. No yep, flag did go down against the defense, and that pass for Scooter Monroe. And they will spot him down at the 23-yard line, but I believe it's going to be defense stepped across just before the ball was snapped, and uh, it was Wimson. Yeah, I think you'll take the penalty here, Ron. Like both of these teams, I talked about the parallel between the two coaches, longtime assistants, and coming back to their alma mater and, and doing such a good job. Both of these clubs also offensively. Offside, Offside. on the defense. defense. Five yards Five from the yard, previous yard, spot. Yard. Repeat second down. They give you so much to look at when they come from the huddle to the line of scrimmage. They shift and then they motion, and it uh, there is it's a potpourri of the world. Get you to comment on that after this play right here. The second down. They need to take it to the NC State 18-yard line for the first down. Hill short drop right over the middle. Got it complete. And that's Whitmer. Daryl Whitmer. Reese Davis. Let's check with you. All right, Ron, you guys have seen how turnovers can play a part already. Brandon Doman was picked off for just the fifth time this season, and Lance Rice for Utah would turn it in to a touchdown to Dennis Smith in the battle for the beehive boot. Utah up on BYU by a touch. First down for Maryland. The new line of scrimmage is at the 14-yard line. Hill comes the other way. Going to run the option. Hit hard as he gets to the 10-yard line. And he's going to be hit by Hudson and stopped right there. But again, that option, it just gives you something. I guess not a great option quarterback, but he just gives you that much more to think about. No, but that was a uh, keeper all the way. He was following the fullback on that play. But, Ron, to answer your question about all the offense, what their both coordinators offensively are doing right now is exploring the defense. They're giving you a lot of looks, see your adjustments, write them down, then they'll come back to them. Sean Hill with a second down at the NC State 10-yard line. Right up the middle of Bill Perry, and he's going to have three yards, maybe four. They're going to spot him down at the six. Jerry Hall defensively. Rod Gilmore and I talked Thursday night. Anytime Maryland gets inside the 10-yard line, you've got to be prepared to stop the option. Now, the reason the option's so tough uh, down inside the goal line is because everybody are down inside the 10. Everybody's playing inside and trying to stop the power running game, and all of a sudden you run the option, seal everything inside. Well, you hear the crowd coming to their feet. It's third down, and the situation is Maryland needs the four-yard line. Short drop, quick pass right over the middle, and it's picked up. That's Patterson, only Sean Hill to be. Yards. And when you 
you see the replay, you're going to say Whitmer probably should have caught the football. I don't think there's any doubt. He's open, should have caught the football. He gets hit by Holt. Terrence Holt, number nine. The ball goes right into Julius Patterson's hands. Nice job by Sean Hill buying a little time so he could get some defensive help. Sean Hill did an absolutely perfect job. He put the ball right where it had to be. And Whitmer, as he got hit, as Mike said by Holt, pops it up. And it's a 67-yard return. Here's Robinson. Pop by the ankle. That's a nice defensive play by E.J. Henderson. If Henderson doesn't get him, he might have had another 10 yards in front of him. Everybody's talked to us about E.J. Henderson. And you're right. That play right here, he just makes an ankle tackle. But he's everywhere. He scrapes off, and you've got to make sure you block him at all times. A great linebacker, middle linebacker. He's a junior, injured a knee as a sophomore, but has just come on with a vengeance. He and Fisher, two of the truly outstanding linebackers in America. Here comes the blitz. River steps up, drills the ball, has it complete inside the 25 to the 24 to Brian Peterson, the junior out of Clinton, North Carolina. Talking to Chuck Amato about Phillip Rivers, he said, I talked to Phillip Rivers and I expected that his stats would, could be less this year and he'd still be a better quarterback because he lost his big go-to bomb guy, Corn Robinson. So they don't really have a guy like that this year, so everything they get, they work for. You know, Mike, last week, the play that they made worked so well against Florida State. Over 80% of their passes were 10 yards or less. They didn't try to go downtown with the ball. They did from time to time, but the majority of the stuff was either flare or get it short across the middle. And I think they changed their offense this year a little bit, and they, they try to get the ball Willie Wright to tight ends, hands, and Ray Robinson most of the time. First down, the new line of scrimmage is the Maryland 23. As you look at the numbers on Rivers last week against Florida State is loving this one, but hoping that the Wolfpack can take advantage of this second turnover. Robinson right up the middle. He's tripped up, and guess who? Henderson again gets him by the ankle. Otherwise, there is a lot more yardage in front. That's what you want out of the middle linebacker. You want a guy active, and you want to keep people off of him. You see he's got a good nose for the football. Makes an ankle tackle again. Almost chose the wrong gap, and almost got sealed <laughs> off. He did. He really did. Hannon, the backup quarterback, comes into the ball game. Peterson lines up under center, takes the snap, and it's a straight run. Now, let me explain to you why you got to do it in a hurry, and I got to confuse. Hannon is the backup quarterback, 19. They will use him at wide receiver, at tailback, and also at quarterback. And then they run Brian Peterson in, number two, the wide receiver, who was a former high school quarterback. And they'll put him under center as they did right there. You know why? Because Phillip Rivers is not going to be an option threat. So you got to <laughs> stick somebody in there with great speed to run the option. Phillip Rivers, this time from a shotgun. Third down, and the line that he needs is the 13 of Maryland. About to go under four minutes to play, opening quarter. Rivers steps up, got a man, throws it complete. The official says complete, Maryland says no. But now they wave it off. They say incomplete to Willie Wright, to tight end. They brought, Maryland brought the corner from the short, short side of the field. Want to see him come from the top of the right here, number six, and it threw off the route a little bit. Foxworth, the corner, and let's see at the ball. Oh my, that's a catch! Looks like he has it. <laughs> Kiker to attempt the field goal. It's an attempt of 33 yards from the far hash mark. Good pass, plenty of distance on this one, and the Wolfpack at home saying, hello, Maryland, you may be 9-1, but we score first. 350 left to play, opening quarter. It's the Wolfpack 3 and Maryland nothing. It responds to the power of your voice. It lets you focus on the road ahead. Star personal calling. Call Commissioner Gordon. With the safety of hands-free dialing, you can concentrate on more important things, like driving. Gordon here. 
I'm on my way. You could win a walk-on part in the next Batman movie or an OnStar-equipped vehicle. Go to OnStar.com. It's different down here. EA Sports. It's in the game. Rated E for everyone. Let's bout it out for your Pittsburgh Steelers! I don't care what stadium you work for, alright? If you want to write a check for who let the dogs out, I'm still going to need to see some ID. Next time, use the Visa check card instead of cash or checks. It'll get you in, out, and on with life. Smash mouth football right up until kickoff. A little football amongst friends. Sunday NFL Countdown. Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Monster.com, who reminds you, job good, life good, and by Burger King, home of the Whopper. So, <laughs> Chuck Amato's white shoes room. Packer to kick it off. Parson is the deep man. Into the wind, and this one will be returnable from the four. Runs into his own man as he crosses the 30-yard line. And Victor Stevens making the stop will take a timeout. 339 remaining opening quarter. The Wolfpack has gone on top first. What's the capital of Alaska? Alaska. If you want to know the capital of Alaska, you go ahead and call Alaska. Isn't that kind of expensive? Not anymore. In fact, your sister's on the other line to Japan. Oh, but son, go ahead to your tonight. Seki ni tabiti kite o matsuru kara. Sign up for Cox Digital Telephone and start enjoying the savings today. Just call 602-795-7955. I just moved into my apartment, but I got the basics covered. Food, electricity. Cable? You know it. But no home phone. Know why? Because nobody wants to talk to you? No, smart guy. Because Cricket's the only phone I need. It's just one low monthly price for all my local calls. So with Cricket, I don't need anything else. Except furniture. Call long distance to anywhere in the U.S. Only eight cents a minute, anytime, with Cricket. Another spectacular NFL matchup on ESPN. New England's Tom Brady and his surprising pads try to keep up with Kurt Warner. An explosive Ram offense. Warner touchdown! Rams Patriots 830 Sunday on ESPN. Unscripted with Chris Connolly. Not just sports talk. It's unrehearsed. Not intellectual enough to follow that question. <laughs> it's unpredictable. <laughs> unscripted with Chris Connolly. Weekdays at 5 on ESPN. Three to nothing, North Carolina State. Show you what happened just a moment ago. Chuck Amato, and that's the back judge who made the call of the non-catch. Chuck is going to follow him down the sideline, and he's well within his rights. He's inside the barrier. Whoa, Chuck, can't go any further. Here is, uh, here's the play. Willie Wright. And you know, it doesn't matter if you catch it on the ground. The only thing I can figure, Mike, is that they said he did not have possession of the football. That's the only reason. Yeah, it looked like he had possession, and they would have good field position to try to score a touchdown. They would have had a first down, no question about that. Bruce Perry in motion. Here comes the option. Pitch back to Perry, and this one's going to be doomed. Now, Patterson on the stop, 
and Mike make the point here. The minute Sean Hill slowed down and held on to the ball that long, it gave the defense time to get there, didn't it? Well, what one thing North Carolina State looks like they're doing when the motion man goes in motion, they're angling their defensive line to the side. He's gone. So they get a little bit, a half a head extra to that side. And Sean Hill's coming down. The longer you can string out an option, the yeah. better you are. Loss of three, second down to 13. Pressure on Hill, he's going to go down. And that is Chapman, Terrence Chapman, a junior out uh, of Fort Myers School, about way of Los Angeles Valley College. Well, it looks like that North Carolina State has gotten over their FSU win because they're playing with a lot of life here in the first quarter. Chapman coming around the corner, beats the block of C.J. Brooks. Third down. They need to take it all the way to the 41-yard line if they're going to keep this drive going. Sean Hill deep in the pocket. Sets the screen. Perry hit immediately. What a defensive play. Lamont Reed. Lamont Reed made the play of the night defensively for the Wolfpack. First punt of the night, and this crowd is aroused. Under two minutes to play, opening quarter. Barnard gets a good pass. They're coming after him. Line drive. Driven all the way back to the 30-yard line of Jericho Cotteri. Got a wall, but their flags all over the place. Cotteri hit with a head-high tackle. Coming back around about the 40-yard line, a block in the back. 52 yards on the kick, 30 on the return, but as you suggested, this one is going to come way back. You want players on special teams that aren't going to make those mistakes. And now if it's close, it's close, and you. but that one wasn't even close. And, and the difficult thing is your defense has done more than their job. Even with a 52-yard kick, you're going to get the ball in good field position. Yeah, there, there it is right here with a block in the back. Not even close. Poor judgment. And you want good judgment on special teams right there. So instead of having the ball across midfield, North Carolina State will scrimmage from their own 31-yard line. Robinson, the lone setback. Rivers under center this time. And here comes that reverse I was talking about, and it's Edwards. And he'll come into the short side of the field for a very short gain. And Reese Davis will check with you again. Ron, Florida State and Florida, the rarest of sights for the Gators. That is Matt Leach actually punting the ball. The Gators hadn't punted in two games only the 22nd time all year. Scoreless still in the first quarter between the Gators. I think Leach is going to get his lighter sweater now. Well, I'll tell you what, in the week before when they did punt, he was not real good, quite no. frankly. No. <laughs> At Auburn, uh, we saw they had tr problems in the punting game. Rivers sets to throw, zings this one, hats really right, and this one is caught, and a position is made for sure, out around the 40-yard line, about a yard short. When coaches sit down and say, hey, who's our best threats offensively, you figure Ray Robinson, Willie Wright is an excellent tight end at catching the football. Mike, uh, the head coach told me yesterday, and he said, I know this is a mouthful, he may be the best catching tight end I've ever been around. He said, I, I don't want to overhype him, but he said he, he will catch the ball any place you get it near him. And he's a good target, Ron. Six foot four, 240. Rivers zips this one. It is cut for the first down. It's Brian Peterson. Out to the 46 yard line. Brian Peterson. 
Anderson benefits from the fact that Ray Robinson's coming out of the backfield. And everybody is uh, watching Ray Robinson. Ray Robinson comes out of the backfield and he really opens up because the linebacker and the defensive back are worried about Ray Robinson. Keep an eye, Hannon is back in the ball game. The number two quarterback, he's at the bottom of your screen as a wide receiver. But they go straight ahead with Robinson on the running play, short yardage, a gain of maybe one, and that's it. So every time Hannon comes in the ball game again, it is just something else that the Maryland defense has to think about as we show double zeros up on the clock. And that is the end of the first quarter. And they're standing and cheering here at Carter Finley. North Carolina State, three to nothing. Right back. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, begins Tuesday, November 27th. is like a natural food product. The fresher it is, the better it tastes. That's why Budweiser has 12 local breweries right here in the United States. So you know our beer will always be fresh. This bud's for you. And you and you and you. This bud's for you. For sinus sufferers, it can start with a twinge. A signal your sinuses are going to be trouble. Don't let it happen. Take Sudafed at the first sign. Untreated sinus pressure can escalate to pain, but taking Sudafed at the first sign releases pressure, so symptoms don't get worse. The first sign of pressure. That's my signal. Take non-drowsy Sudafed at the first sign. And for nighttime sinus relief, try new Sudafed Sinus Nighttime. <laughs> Tools stand tall. Adjustable. Versatile. And virtually unstoppable. Even the most intimidating job is no match for vice grip locking tools. At 25, I wanted to make vice president. At 35, I wanted to make my first million. At 45, I wanted to make enough to buy the company. Now all I want is to make it around this track two-tenths of a second faster. At Lincoln Financial Group, we provide clear, understandable, customized solutions to help you manage, protect, and enjoy the work of a lifetime. Lincoln Financial Group. Clear solutions in a complex world. Media cameras, the most realistic digital images yet. Nothing's impossible. Olympus. Welcome back, second quarter. Number nine, Maryland, off to a sluggish start in the opening quarter. Uncharacteristically, two turnovers, one fumble, and one interception return. Philip Rivers. Heading the other direction now goes under center. The ball at the 47-yard line, second down and long. Robinson. Robinson nice open field field. tackle. Rod Littles. Gain of three yards. A lot of misdirection in NC State's offense, always bringing a trail back when they give the handoff on the zone play and uh, a fine designed offense by Marty Galbert, who used to be at Marshall. Third down, they need to take it to the 44 yard line. Hannon back in the ball game at wide receiver. Rivers drills this one complete to the 40 yard line. That'll be good for the first down to Cotchery. Gain of 12. Talking to Marty Galbraith, he talked about Philip Rivers. He said he's like a young Chad Pennington. Whole key to our offense.
defense. And you can see there, Ron, he makes good decisions. He's a young quarterback, been playing since his freshman year. Dad's a coach. He just looks like he knows where to throw the ball all the time. I tell you what, he is a delight. Sat down and talked with him yesterday, and his parents should be very, very proud. He, uh, he's a delightful young guy to visit with. Student of the game, he's turning into a very good quarterback. Here's this one, has it complete at the 30-yard line to Kachiri. He's got a funny motion, but I said when somebody asked me about his motion, I said, Norm Chow was here. He's a very good football coach, and a lot of quarterbacks, Bernie Car Kozar and I think Billy Kilmer, and, you know, a lot of guys weren't the prototype uh, quarterbacks with a motion. He holds the ball low and throws it, uh, but uh, as long as he gets it there, that's all you want. That was Mike Whaley who was applying pressure and hitting him. As you look at the numbers on Rivers, 5 of 8, 41 yards. They give it to Robinson. They get the block they want inside the 25, close to the 20-yard line, and it's another North Carolina State first down. Rod Little's on the tackle. And what they're doing right now is they're keeping that very dangerous Maryland offense on the sideline and also working this defense overtime. The game track. Turnovers, Maryland 2, North Carolina State 1 in that opening quarter. The catch that almost was an interception. That one returned for 67, and here's the one Willie Wright was denied. And then Kiker, 33 yards on the field goal. That's a career long for him. Three wide receivers go to the top of your screen. Here comes a blitz off the corner. They give it to Robinson. He ran right by the blitz man, but up inside the defense was too tough, and it'll be a gain of only one as Charles Hill was there to make the tackle. And you talk about a change in momentum. Maryland was going in to score, and that ball was in the hands of the wide receiver, and uh, the hit by Terrence Holt, and then the ball pops out, and the later it's three to, three to nothing ball game. Again, three wide receivers go to the top of your screen. Tenth play of the drive. Cannon in the ball game, and now he goes under center. They split out. Rivers on this side. Cannon gets the pass out. That's Peterson. Peterson tries to turn the corner. Mike, we're only in the second quarter, and it's early, and they're pulling out all the stops, aren't they? Well, you, you know, in a big ball game you want to show your players you want to make play calls that show your players that you're you're going to challenge the defense and that's what Chuck Amato Marty Galbraith the offensive coordinator are doing they're showing their team that they have confidence in them in whatever they call we'll tell you more about a hand and as the game goes on they call him slash 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 because he plays four different positions situation here third down they need the 11 yard line to pick up the first Cotchery in motion rivers over the middle it is caught that's Willie really right Wright the tight end first and goal North Carolina State Willie Wright is going to benefit because the wide receiver is going to clear out and Willie Wright's going to come underneath him and make the catch and shows you again. He, he snatches the ball out of the air. Mike, I'm not, you saw the reaction by Rivers. I'm not so sure he wasn't throwing the contrary. They both <laughs> went the same direction. <laughs> but same he turned to the right guy. 13th right. play of the drive. First down and goal. The ball just outside the six-yard line. NC State trying to build on the 3 to nothing lead. And he just throws this one away up into section 314. Coach for Jackson, the closest man to it. And that will calm things down and stop the clock here for just a second. Ralph Friedgen needs a big play from his defense, as Chuck Amato got from his defense yeah. uh, just about uh, 10 minutes ago. They Game need to hold him to a field goal attempt down here. Second down. So Rivers bends down and he calls the play. Cannon comes back into the ball game at wide receiver, number 19, bottom of your screen. He is split out to the right. Good draw formation right here. And it's going to be quarterback draw. He runs right into the defensive player. Going to be tackled after a Rivers gain of maybe one. Mike Whaley is the man who made the hit. You see that every week. A team's trying to spread out the defense and run a draw. Phillip Rivers wants a timeout. 
I'll tell you what, Phillip had to chase the official all the way to the sideline to get his attention, and then he called a timeout to stop the clock. So we'll take it with him. 10.48 remaining until halftime. NC State 3 to nothing, and they are driving. Possibilities. Mexico, closer than ever. For his first attempt, a 360 tomahawk. Introducing new Tostito scoops. Amazing. And now the alley oop reverse. With the bite sized, bowl shaped design. Oh my. And what everyone's been waiting for the two handed thunder. For the perfect dip every time. Oh, the judges have to be impressed. New Tostito Scoops. The Dip Lover's Chip. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. 14th play of the drive, 535. Taken off the clock on this drive. It is third down and goal at North Carolina State. Against FSU, they hit Robinson in the same field position on a flare route to see if they go to him. Well, they sprint out of the huddle to the line of scrimmage. Quick snap. They get it out, and that's Peterson who drops the ball. Now, Maryland thought, and it's very smart thinking on both teams' part, that could have been a pass, a backwards pass, and that they might be able to recover it. Yeah, that's, that's like a toss sweep, getting it out there, and you got two blockers in front of Peterson. Just raise up and throw in the football. And he had some room to get outside, maybe score if he catches that yeah, football. Because Patrick was out there blocking Jeff, for him. Meanwhile, Packer will try a 22-yard field goal. Knocks it home. 10 minutes, 40 seconds left until halftime, and they're saying officially now a 23-yard field goal. So he has one from 33 at 23. Six to nothing. NC State on top. Looking to save a little time this holiday season? Then go to BestBuy.com. You can find great gift ideas online. Then when you come to the store, you'll know just what to get. Best Buy. This holiday, turn on the fun. Who's got the closest shave? He does. Even on the tough spots. The new Remington TCT. The only shaver that first trims the hard-to-get hairs, then follows with three flexing foils to cut even closer. The new Remington TCT. Total closeness or your money back. Look, this is a dirty fuel injector. 
This is a clean one. As you can see, cleaner works better. That's why I use STP fuel injector cleaner in my car. I add STP every time I change my oil. STP, it's basic car maintenance. Tony Kornheiser, Michael Robot. Pardon the interruption. 5.30 p.m. Eastern weekdays on ESPN and again at 7 on ESPN2. BTI. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Mitsubishi Eclipse. It's impossible to sneak around in. Are you in? Well, they call it the tunnel of free expression here on campus. And as you might imagine, very popular with the, uh, with the students. Just right over everybody's words all the time. People have been doing that for years, Mike. They've got a pleasure with it. <laughs> Ron, that may come back to haunt. The, the two field back. goals. Two field goals. They, they've got to be able to punch it in. Packer to kick off. Parson is the deep man. And he'll return this one from the seven-yard line. Parson, big opening. 30 out to the 35-yard line. That's a nice job on the special teams by Maryland. Good field position. Tomorrow, ESPN Sunday Night Football. The St. Louis Rams taking on the New England Patriots. Kurt Water still nursing that sprained right thumb. Has thrown seven interceptions the past two games, but Marshall Falk returned to the lineup last week and had 183 yards. Rams and Patriots tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern. Mark Riley checks in at tailback for Maryland. Number two. Hill zings this one complete to the 42-yard line. Defensively, Hudson is there to make the hit, and Reese Davis will check with you again. Ron, I believe the old ball coach was irritated about having to punt because he went deep in the playbook against Grossman. Florida State. A little trickeration. Jabbar Gaffney heaves it up. Ernest Graham wide open. He'd get deep in Seminole territory, and then that's a little counter-option pitch. Graham takes it in. Gators on top of the Knolls by a touchdown. <laughs> Well, that's the important player. Graham is healthy, then it's a tough night. Tough sledding for the Seminoles. Ball to hand it off to Riley. He will try to turn the corner very close to the first down at the 45-yard line. Adrian Karsten, injury update for us. For the first time tonight, number 44 linebacker for uh, NC State, LeVar Fisher came in without that brace on his knee. He injured against Clemson. Well, now it's his right knee that he hurt earlier in the game particularly in the first quarter. Great pursuit to the left side of the line, but when he tries to come back, he takes a shot right there. Almost non-contact, but see the trouble he has getting up. Since then, he's been slowed by about two steps per play. Even though he's got the brace off that left knee, he is not 100%. Third down and short, Adrian, and they come to the line of scrimmage very quickly. Quarterback sneak it. He'll pick up the first down. The difficult thing for a guy like Fisher, he and Henderson are exactly alike in the fact their motors run constantly. And you can't, this kid doesn't know how to go to the bench and sit, Mike. No, he doesn't. And one of the things he doesn't do well, he tackles with his head a lot of times. So he'll miss a lot of tackles. And Chuck Amato said if he didn't do that, didn't duck his head or lead with his head, he'd have so many more tackles. Perry checks back into the lineup for Maryland, number one. It's Perry in motion. And a set of running the option, they're going to go long. And it is overthrown, incomplete at the 25-yard line. It was Gary that they were looking for. Julian Gary, a senior out of first head, New York. With this formation, they try to bring you in for the option and try to hit the post behind you. Here it goes. All of a sudden, the option game comes, and here's a good job by the corner. Number Hudson. one, Hudson, keeping him, pressing him down the wide receiver so they couldn't get a free release. Gary. Second down, 10 yards to pick up the first. Movement of the offensive line, it looked like Lamar Bryant came out of his stance, sophomore out of Clinton, Maryland. And again, you go back to Ralph Friedgen. Prior to the snap, false start on the offense. He was worried his team was going to be content to have a little piece of the championship, and he was worried about that. Uh, you know, the difficult thing, Mike, and we talked about it this week, is the coaches can't control. They tell the kids how they have to focus, and they still haven't won anything yet. But as they go around campus, everybody's patting uh, them on the back. That's without a doubt. You, the telephone calls, congratulations. It goes all the way through Wednesday and Thursday. You say, who do we play this week? <laughs> Looking near sideline. Got it complete at the 48-yard line. That's uh, Jafar Williams. 
Going to pick up very short yardage on the play. Adrian Carston, what do you have for us? Back on Monday, Chuck Amato said, told his players, I don't want to hear the phrase of the words Florida State anymore, or I'm going to give you gassers. That is to say, extra workouts. Well, pretty much the players said, yeah, we, we followed through on that, but we couldn't help you and pat it on the back and congratulate it throughout the rest of the week. But Chuck told me before the game, let's get through the first quarter score early, then I'll be convinced that we finally forgot Florida State and are concentrating on Maryland. You know, Adrian, both of these coaches had similar problems this week. Hill under heavy pressure gets this one off and tackled immediately at the 43-yard line for a loss. Hudson is right there defensively. And he's a freshman, true freshman, Marcus Hudson making that tackle. But Ron, just to echo what you said is North Carolina State is flying around a lot more than Maryland to this point in this football game. Not to say that the Terrapins won't come alive, but they have had slow starts on the road this year, even with their 9-1 record. Good pass, and come after him. He gets off a dandy kick into the wind. Bearcats is called for and made at the 11 by Cotchery. That is 46 yards into the wind and under a lot of pressure. We'll be right back. Turn right here. Excuse me. Do you know where the art museum is? It's two blocks up. Thank you. You're into art? Oh, oh yeah. Sculpture mostly. I mean, uh, I like paintings too, but... The 2002 Mitsubishi Galant. She was helpful. Right now, pay zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2003. Volkswagen before someone else does because right now they're going fast. On Sunday NFL countdown. Build the stadium for the Vikings. Can we get more back would. over next to me? I need to sit next to more. This week, Bill Parcells returns to the team. Let's play somebody. Let's get somebody that hits back. Marshall Falk is back. Go head to head with the league's MVP. I think we got our swagger back. And Jeff Garcia, behind the man who makes the Niners offense go. Plus previews from all around the league. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. Welcome back to Carter Findlay, Ron Franklin, Mike Godfrey, to Adrian Karsten, and good to have you along. A showdown in the ACC as Maryland trying to win the title. A NC State trying to spoil the party. Yeah, I think NC State's looking at, of course, Maryland's looking at the Orange Bowl if they win this game, and uh, NC State's looking at the Gator Bowl if they win it, maybe the Peach Bowl. So uh, both have a lot to play for. Maryland, the championship. Rivers with an audible. Gives it to Robinson. Boy, penetration and in the backfield of Smith. Scott Smith is right there to destroy that play before it got started. Sophomore out of Philadelphia. Gary Blackney, the uh, former head football coach at Bowling Green, is the defensive coordinator, and he's trying to get his players a little bit more in position, take a little bit more chances. He knows his offense is struggling a little bit. The defense has to set the tempo now for Maryland. Comes back in at uh, the wide receiver. That's him in the slot, bottom of the screen. This pass comes out to Blake Patrick. Broke one tackle. And then the, staying with the play, Rendell Jones saved a very big play. Run up. Bumping him out of bounds. Yeah, missed tackle. Dominique Foxworth is going to miss the tackle right here. Now that's a five yard play. Now you come up and make the tackle right here but he doesn't he misses the tackle now Cottrell gets more yardage in a first down Cottry finally bumped out of bounds I need to tell you that Foxworth only played last week they were going to redshirt him this is very late in the year but they've had problems with injuries at that corner and he's a true freshman 
Rivers got him right up and right over the middle, 42 to the 45-yard line. Brian Peterson, and it's first down for the Wolfpack. It's a gain of 20. Jones defensively. Now the Wolfpack is in uh, motion right now. Everything they're trying offensively, working. Brian Peterson down the seam. They fake the draw. And Brian Peterson's going to come in your screen. And then the tackle by Randall Jones. But they really have Maryland's defense off balance. Clock runs about to go under six minutes left of the opening half. And you look at total yards. NC State doubling what the Terrapins have been able to do so far. It's Cotri in motion. Top of the screen. Pick out pass. Almost intercepted, and I'll tell you, if Jackson had looked up, instead of making the hit, he might have picked it off and done just what the defense needed. You're right. Phillip Rivers with a big mistake there. He, he didn't get the right read there because Ray Robinson was not the receiver you go to because Jackson's in oh. great shape right there to intercept the football. That ball went right in front of his face mask. <laughs> he was too worried about making the hit. When he sees that one on the video, he's going to say, oh, no, I could have been in touchdown land very quickly. Canada quarterback. They're going to run the option. Or will he pull up and pass? Well, he's going to run it. 35 at the 50. Flag comes down. It's got to be a holding call. Yeah. Maybe on the tight end also. Yeah. He was out there trying to help out. Willie Wright, because he got outside so free. Going to be holding against NC State. Reese Davis will check with you again. Ron, the Trojans look as if they're ready to ring the victory bell up. 17-0 on UCLA. And this is Chris Howard, a little option look. And watch Howard get loose through that once vaunted UCLA defense. 35 yards to the house. Pete Carroll's team up 24 to nothing. UCLA looks like they have just uh, packed it in. Well, Mike, they have had so yeah, many so many distractions. Deshaun Foster now gone for the year because of taking the inducements. The NCAA rules him ineligible. Just more distractions than you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Distraction with their quarterback from two DUI convictions. Going to have to spend time uh, being incarcerated. So Bob Toledo's had more than he could say grace over. Quick look in pass in the middle screen at the 40-yard line. It's still in Hicks. And the little freshman will take it out to the 48-yard line. Good for 13 yards. Randall Jones making the stop. Safe call. Now it gets him back in position for a third down in short to medium call. Third down. The situation, they need to take it to the 45-and-a-half-yard line to keep this drive going. Wolfpack leads it, six to nothing. River's going to have to hurry. Two seconds, here comes the blitz. Doesn't see it, and the ball is caught in bounds at the 41-yard line. Pachiru. And I mean Rivers got belted after he delivered the football by Thompson. Aaron Thompson was coming pell-mell after the quarterback. He didn't seem coming. Philip Rivers may have failed him, and uh, but he got the ball off just before the hit by Thompson. Here comes Thompson, just levels him after the hit. Good catch. Patchery now four catches, 47 yards. Vandiver, the tight end, flips from the right side over to the left. And that's Joe Gray in motion. Running play with Coach Jackson, and that play was kind of doomed from the get-go. It's almost like everybody was not sure exactly yeah. where to line up. Mike Whaley. They tried to get the extra blocker by trading the tight end over the left side. But when you look at this ball game, this defense from Maryland's been on the field a bunch here in the first half. Oh, they have. They really have. And Maryland's offense really has to generate some, some big plays or keep the football. Second down and 10 from the 41-yard line. Rivers gets this one complete to Cotchery. Cotchery now with five catches in the first half, and he's very close to another first down as Littles makes the stop. You talked about the short passing game, and what that'll do is frustrate the defensive lineman. 
because all of a sudden you work hard to get to the quarterback and he's releasing the ball in five steps and in quick five to seven to eight yard passes and you never get to hit him. Third down and short. Splits very tight. Rivers the quarterback, and I'll tell you what, I don't think he made it. I don't unless think he, he did, did with that last effort. If they gave him the last effort, the second effort, Charles Hill was there just sitting right in the hole, and this may require a measurement. Yep, he's going to have it. I don't know if he mishandled the snap or what on that play, but uh, like they just got penetration and shoved the center back. Didn't have the football, but the second effort when he was able to spin over. Oh, they're shifting people all over the place. Looks like a, another jailbreak. Six to nothing, they lead it. Robinson goes left side, bounces off one tackler, short yardage. It's Whaley again. And uh, we're about to go under three minutes left in the first half. Now, the difference in time of possession, Mike is only about 15, 15 and a half to 11. But majority of that has come in the second quarter because Maryland ran the ball and did such a good job of it early on in the first quarter. They were up in time of possession. Yeah, I think that interception on about the two-yard line that Maryland threw, they have not recovered from that yet. Rivers directing traffic, two wide receivers to either they got, side. They got a wide open receiver here. Rivers drills it. Did he catch it in bounds? Yes, at the 26. Patrick, catch number six. Foxworth is the man who made the tackle. Yeah, Cotchery is a, a fine receiver with great hands. Here's what I was talking about on that last play an open receiver. He tried to bait Hannon. He tried to bait uh, NC State to throw into him. A little sidearm throw here. Third down. They need to take it to the 21 yard line to keep this drive going. Under two and a half minutes to play until halftime. Six to nothing. North Carolina State leading the number nine team. And Rivers wants to call a timeout. So we'll take it with him. 226 left until intermission. Secure, reliable connections, blazing fast logon times. When you're looking to get the most out of the internet, no one knows their way around the World Wide Web like AT&T WorldNet Service. Great, credit card bill. Wonder what's in here this time. <laughs> these fees. What's that, hon? <laughs> One rate for purchases? Oh. <laughs> A higher rate for cash advances. <laughs> and those telemarketers. <laughs> Relax. We switched to Capital One's new no-hassle card. Huh? <gasps> Capital One. Oh. <laughs> Introducing Capital One's new no-hassle platinum card. No balance transfer fees and no telemarketing, plus one low fixed rate on everything from purchases to cash advances. <laughs> Check your mailbox today and get Capital One's new no-hassle platinum card for one low rate and none of the hassle. <gasps> Honey, you okay? What's in your wallet? Over back six to nothing. They have made their decision. A ball control, 37 plays to 21 in the first half. And the majority of the second quarter has, uh, has been in control of NC State, or them in control of the football. One thing about running a lot of offense, sometimes you've got to find uh, what you want to hang your hat on. Maryland hasn't done that yet. Third down. They need to take it to the 21 yard line. Rivers swings it out, got him open. Robinson, and what a nice defensive play on a one-on-one. -on -one. Making the hit is Cox, the sophomore out of Arlington, Virginia. Because Robinson was open, plenty of space to catch the ball, and then Cox came up and one-on-one -on -one smacked him. You're right, Ron. They're going to force another field goal attempt. 
Well, put an asterisk by that play right there, but because for the world it looked as though he was going to be able to get by the defensive back and take it down enough for the first down. It's going to be a 42-yard field goal attempt. It would be his career long if he hits it. Got the distance, and he's got the accuracy. Packer has been the man. Nine to nothing. Wolfpack goes on top. We'll take a timeout. There are places on Earth where the chase never ends. Where the need to know is an insatiable appetite. And the laboratory is a limitless realm that we are free to hunt. Pushing back the frontiers of science, engineering, and technology. North Carolina State University. Knowledge is the prey. We are the hunters. The Atlantic Coast Conference. 23 players selected in the 2001 NFL Draft. Three players honored as academic All-Americans. Heisman Trophy and Lombardi Award winners. 13 players honored as All-Americans. Pure power. Pure tradition. Pure thrill. The ACC. Accelerate your dreams. Well, the Maryland coaches on the far sideline trying to get them pumped up. Defense has done a nice job. They've held NC State out of the end zone. They've held them to three field goals. But since early in the first quarter, the Maryland offense has been just in a stupor. They have not done anything. They need, they got two timeouts left here. They need a big kickoff return here to get some excitement in, in their offense. Well, let's see what happens. Parson had a very nice return the last kickoff. He brought it back out to the 35-yard line. They need another good one. Right? And it's going to go out of the end zone. Reese Davis will check with you again. All right, Ron, coming up on the Saturn halftime report, the Orange went down to the Orange Bowl. They got squeezed, they got crushed, they got put through the juicer. The big Orange escaped in the Bluegrass State, and we'll also have more on Rivalry Saturday, some other surprises. We'll have all of that for you. Rod Gilmore's here on the Saturn halftime report. See you in a few minutes. Okay, Reese, thanks very much. Reese got a lot of orange on his mind. They got, got to, some offense on their mind. Yeah, they better have some offense on their mind. If they need to become very offensive. They're 80 yards away and they've got 138 to deal with. Sean Hill. Rifles this pass. Tip. It is intercepted. That's Fisher. Fisher down the sideline. And he is knocked out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. And there are two markers down. And offsides, one of them. Offsides on North Carolina State. Oh, boy. Sean Price, number 56, was offside. Friedgen can breathe a huge sigh of relief. An offside on Sean Price, and you got a free play, but uh, Sean Hill's receivers have not been able to bring the football in. It's another drop ball that should have been caught. The one should have been caught for the touchdown back in the first quarter. Drop play. Much doing. Boy, they've done a good job of covering up Perry since the opening sequence. Perry's first four carries, he averaged seven and a half yards. He had 30 yards, but that was Smith who had him by the ankle that time. Now they looked like they were going to come out of the gate and run the ball successfully against this defense. 
Well, an interesting number, and you see what he's talking about. He's holding his hands up, talking, and he wants the receivers to start gathering in the football, catching the ball, because Sean Hill is putting the ball where it can be caught. Well, coming up tomorrow morning on Sunday NFL Countdown, a conversation with uh, the Rams' Mr. Everything, running back Marshall Fogg. And the 49ers' Jeff Garcia is he the game's new prototype quarterback. And the NFL's leading rusher, Curtis Martin of the Jets. Bill Parcells will join Chris in the game 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow. You know, Jeff Garcia, Bill Walsh really believed in him and tried to call all the coaches he knew that was in pro football. None of them would take him. So when he went back to the 49ers, he got him there and uh, proved to be a great get a few. Bill Walsh calls you and says the quarterback can play. Just sign him. You don't ask <laughs> any questions. I agree with you. Second down and two. Perry. Big opening up the middle. He'll have the first down plus about seven, eight, make it almost ten more yards. Defensively, Ricky Fowler made the tackle, but it's a gain of 13 yards. Now, that's what he was doing early. Yeah, now, this is what Maryland should be very good at. A, a two-minute drill here with 111 and two timeouts left. Hill steps up. Got this one. Got it open and another drop pass. Scooter Monroe was looking over the other shoulder, had to turn and look the other way, but that still was a catchable football. He put that right on the money. Price applying pressure on the quarterback, but watch the non-result here, and you'll see this ball's catchable. Oh, boy. Terrence Holt on coverage. Makes him pay for not catching the football. So Sean Hill should have three more receptions tonight than he has. This pass is caught at the 49-yard line as Rich Parson makes the reception. Victor Stevens on the defense. He was battling, uh, trying yeah. to get the ball trying away to from him. Steal it. it away. Yep. Maryland calls a timeout. They'll stop the clock with 47 seconds left until halftime. Novak warming up on the sidelines and hoping at least they get a shot at a field goal. Chuck Amato's done everything possible to put last week's win over Florida State in the past, but it was hard on him to forget the handshake at the end of the game with his mentor, Bobby Bowden. Wow, I'm excited. I don't want him to see that I'm excited that I beat him. We're walking over, and Coach, congratulations, Chuck, and as he's talking, and, and all of a sudden I start crying. I couldn't hold it back. And, and he says, what is wrong with you? And I said, he goes, you ought to be, you're, you're supposed to be happy. I says, coach, I said, you know I'm Italian. And when we're happy, we cry. I says, and we also do something else, and I grabbed him and I hugged him. Third down, two yards to pick up the first. Has this one complete? Bumped out of bounds at the 45. Rich Parson. I think of Chuck Amato there. He said, I'm Italian. I was crying. But Bobby Bowden was crying too. <laughs> and crying because he lost the game. And, uh, and knowing he had Steve Spurrier coming uh, up this week. NC State played an outstanding ball game. And Florida State could have pulled the Cardinals in. They could have been looking ahead to this week's ball game. And it cost them. Nine to nothing. We'll pack on top here. Again, same sideline, and they run it into the boundary. That's Jafar Williams complete. This is going to do a lot of good for Maryland. I don't care if they score any points here. Now, obviously, they want to score some points, but all of a sudden now it looks like Sean Hill and the offense, uh, NC State playing a little loose on them, but they're getting the drive going, getting some confidence back. Did you run a stop and go? I think the back out of the backfield. They, they better be conscious of him. Here's Perry. 
Going to go up the far sideline, and it is caught at the 15-yard line by Williams. Great catch, Jafar Williams, against Marcus Hudson. I think he did the stop and go, did yeah. he not? Did it against a true freshman left corner who had a 100-yard interception return versus Duke. 31 seconds showing on the clock until halftime. Sean Hill trying to get this slumbering offense awakened, and right now he's doing just that. Sets in the pocket right up in the middle, has it complete inside the 10. It's Jabbar Williams. They have another timeout remaining. Maryland tries to come into the line of scrimmage quickly, and they will call the timeout to stop the clock with 18 seconds left. Just figure a passing team is going to be good. Ralph Friedgen, Charlie Taft's team is going to be good in the two-minute offense. Well, tomorrow on the ESPN Sunday Night Football, the St. Louis Rams bring the NFL's best record into New England to take on the Patriots right after NFL primetime. Marshall fought with 183 yards rushing and two touchdowns a week ago. Tom Brady will get the start for the Patriots. Drew Bledsoe, back from the injury, will be listed as the number two quarterback. Highest paid number two quarterback in the country. Roman Gabriel, pretty good quarterback here. Played at NC State. And played for the Rams. And Torrey Hope plays for the Rams now. Yeah, he's another one on the other end of the pass that you'd like to have. So time is back in. The defense of NC State comes from the near sideline. Maryland from the far sideline. The offense is on the field. 18 seconds left. They have a second down, but they don't care about that. Fade here, Ron. To see if they look to the end zone on this second down play. Got him open, back in the end zone of the other team. Carson. Oh, did he sneak by the defensive secondary. Carson was there. Brian Williams in coverage. Now you got to throw the ball, and you got to throw it into the end zone here. Maryland with no timeouts yeah. left. That's why you got to throw it. Make sure you're in the end zone. from the back side, gets the pass incomplete at the five-yard line. George Anderson, number 34, was really applying backside pressure on Sean Hill. Yeah, Sean Hill couldn't get his arm square to throw the football, and he wisely threw it away to get the chance to get three. Nick Novak. The redshirt freshman out of Charlottesville, Virginia, will attempt the field goal, and now NC State is going to call a timeout. We have eight seconds showing on the clock. And you have to remember that their special teams are very good at blocking punts and also field goal and extra point attempts. Terrence Holt, yep. a very good special teams player. I like the timeout. No sense taking it to the locker room. You're not going to get it back, so... Uh, Get an extra chance for your coach to talk to your special teams. When well, we talked about the NC State special teams and their ability to block kicks, Terrence Holt with a tremendous lead against Georgia Tech and the block. And here's one by Brian Jameson in the season opener against Indiana. This has been a huge momentum changer for the Wolfpack this season. Nick Milbank to attempt a 25-yard field goal attempt from the far hash mark. And he got it. Five seconds showing on the clock, and Maryland is on the scoreboard. Nine to three, the Wolfpack on top. So it's been all field goals in the first half. Yeah, nice drive vote for Maryland. Sean Hill with some key passes in that drive to get at least down there to get three points on the board before you go in at halftime. And you can see the first four drives are not much. Last drive, 52 yards to get the field goal. Five of seven 
And the other thing that, that Ralph, I'm sure, has a huge asterisk by as he will go in at halftime, and that is three dropped passes. One could have been for a touchdown back in the first quarter. Yeah, I don't think there'll be a lot of yelling. I, I think it's just a matter of, hey, let's go out and play our game. You know, we got things open. We got to start start stopping and, and get better tackling on the, uh, the Wolfpack offense in the short passing game. But uh, I think everything's right there for Maryland to come back. Novak prepares to kick it off, and you would look for a line drive kick here rather than the long kick to try to prevent a possible return. And he pooches it. And it's going to be caught. Fair caught, in fact, at the 30-yard line. Lindsay calling for the fair catch and making the reception at the 31-yard line. He took one second off the clock. Yeah, the quarterback sneak will take the next four seconds off. So it's been a very interesting and entertaining first half. We thought it would be, but quite frankly, we also thought it would be a high-scoring first half. But it's been all field goals. Three by North Carolina State and one by Maryland. And Philip Rivers says, hey, let's go to the locker room and regroup. Adrian Karsten, let's check with you before we go to halftime. With the exception of that last offensive drive, a very flat, frustrating half for your team. Coach, did they come in without the hunger that you would hope for? Well, we're not playing like we want this thing at all. I'm very disappointed in what we're playing. Um, give credit to NC State. They're doing a good job. And, um, the, the good thing is we're only six points behind, and I don't think we can play any more than we, what we played all year. The drop balls, the turnovers. What do you tell your offense especially to get them back in this game? Well, we've got to make plays. We want to win. We've got to go out and get it. We're, we're waiting for it to happen. It ain't going to happen. you got to go out and get it. So I appreciate it. We'll see you in the second half. Ron? All righty. So uh, Ralph uh, cuts to the chase and says exactly what they got to get done. 9-3, our score at halftime. Reese Davis and Rodney Gilmore. Let's go back to you. Ron, thank you very much. And Rod, the fridge, not one to mince words. He hasn't all year, and he doesn't here. He's down 9-3 to NC State at the half. Down in the swamp, the battle for the Sunshine State crown among the two big state schools anyway. Florida and Florida State. King Rex. Rex Grossman firing. Taylor Jacobs touchdown. Rex's 52nd touchdown pass. That's an NCAA record for freshman and sophomore. First now, just a matter of time in this one. The offensive line of Florida just dominating. No one getting any close to Rex. The ball coach, no visor tonight, but I think the headsets went down once. Rivalry Saturday coming up on the Saturn Halftime Report. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, begins Tuesday, November 27th. Uh, Bud Light, please. Can I, can I, oh, there you are. Oh, hey, wait. Can I, can I have a Bud Light, please? Yeah. Hi. Can I, oh. With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down. Hey, I'll be right down. Oh, wait. Make it a Bud Light. I'm not very big, said the little blue engine, but we must get over the mountains before the children awake. I think I can. I think I can. I think I can. She tugged and pulled and pulled and tugged and slowly, slowly, they started off. I thought I could, I thought I could, I thought I could.
they bowl in Italy? Do they bowl in Italy? It's the birthplace of bocce ball, but you're missing the point of the story. A mom and pop bowling ball bag manufacturer in Jersey. Jersey? Jersey is swamped with worldwide demand after their product is featured in an Italian fashion magazine. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I was thinking of bocce shirts. Let it go. So they ship via FedEx International Services. With time definite express delivery to over 210 countries, the bags hit the markets. The classic macroeconomic love story. Supply meets demand. I like a nice love story. Welcome to Sports Center In Game. Time for the Saturn Halftime Report. 9 3, North Carolina State has the lead on Maryland at the break. Glad to have you with us on the Saturn Halftime Report. Well, after surviving by the immaculate interception against Boston College last week, Miami's Larry Coker admitted might be a little bit of magic on this team. They were taking on Syracuse down in the old horseshoe in Little Havana this afternoon. And any doubt who the Wizards and who the Muggles were, Rod? No doubt in this one. Here you see Dorsey. He finds Andre Johnson. Wizard, 22 yard touchdown pass. Now 10 0 Miami. Dorsey, Johnson, and I think this is wizardry that Harry Potter would be proud of. Oh, watch the muggles around him. No chance to make <laughs> plays on this wizard as Andre Johnson just, just stupefies three of them, gets into the end zone. 17 0 Miami at that point. Miami was cruising, and then of course you got to find the big tight end, Jeremy Shockey. Give him a little bit of love. That was his second. 59 to nothing. Syracuse came in. They were suspect offensively. The defense was supposed to give Miami a challenge. Did not. Well, this was over after about the second quarter, midway through the second quarter, when there was a fumble that was recovered by Miami. They went on to go ahead 17 zip, and Freeney struggled to get to Dorsey. And did not get to him. In fact, Florida State and Florida, and farther north of the Sunshine State. And ball coach had to punt on the first possession, so. I think that ticked him off, as you mentioned earlier. Comes back with trickeration. Jabbar Gaffney to Ernest Graham. Oh, doesn't quite get all the way there, but it sets up a touchdown. Look at this little counter option like pitch. Wasn't much option to it. He was pitching all the way. Ernest Graham going in. 7 0. Mighty Gators. More from the Gators as. Rex Grossman up 7 0. Looking for Taylor Jacobs and Grossman. He leads the world in just about every passing category, over 300 yards, nine games this year. Looking as if he's going for it again, and he finds Jacobs again. Yeah, and he had plenty of time. That offensive line just dominating the Florida State defensive line. Just a matter of time before they dominate the rest of this ball game. Florida up 17 0. Bobby Bowden asked if he could take a bye this year. It was going to take a miracle. He better start his wizardry to working in a hurry if the Knowles are going to stay in this one. The Big Ten senior day at Ohio State. Steve Belisari not announced or introduced. He was suspended after that DUI. And Illinois coming up with a play in the kicking game. That would be a theme in the Big Ten on this Saturday. Mal Clark picking it up for the Illini, and it's 7-0 just a minute into the game. Later in the first, Scott McMullen, who was starting for the suspended Belisari. Chris Bantz, touchdown, ties the game at 7. Kurt Kittner now looking for Aaron Moorhead. A three straight weeks, bad start. Pretty good finish for Kurt Kittner. Moorhead with the touchdown, made it 21-10. And you get to the third quarter, Craig Krenzel. He finds Michael Jenkins for the touchdown. Got him close, but it wasn't enough. As Kerry Davis goes off left side for a touchdown run, 27-22. Man, they missed Belisari at the end of this ball game. Yeah, 34-22 the final. The Illini win at the Horseshoe again. 9-1 record. Imagine their best start since 1983 and keeping their hopes alive for earning the BCS bid from the Big Ten. And they could be helped largely by Wisconsin against Michigan. And R.J. Morse blocked by Marquise Walker. Did we talk about problems in the kicking game in the Big Ten? Well, Marquise Walker getting in there this time. And now come back Wisconsin. Anthony Davis in the third quarter gets around the right side. In for the score. Anthony Davis, not quite 100 yards on the day, but the close ball game here. This is Martin Noiser, 36 yards to put the Badgers up and couldn't get it done. A little Seminole. It's wide right, 17-17. Score still tied. Michigan now punting. Looks as if we're headed to overtime. They're not even trying to return this. Now watch Brett Bell here. He's a freshman. He's in there just trying to make a half a block. The ball hits him. It can be recovered by Michigan. They do with about 14 seconds left. Just a mistake there. You see that ball hit him. Wisconsin gives up the ball. Poor special teams play. They come right back with Epstein for the game winner. And Michigan survives in Camp Randall Stadium. 20 to 17, the final Michigan won the last five meetings against the Badgers, and Wisconsin, meanwhile, has now lost 
for the sixth time, and they're not going to make it to a bowl. But special teams breakdowns this late in the season for the Badgers. They had the bad play on the punt return team. They got a couple of punts blocked. They missed field goal. This time of year against a good team like Michigan, you just can't afford it. You really can't, and it really shouldn't happen. But, you know, Wisconsin is a young team, especially on defense and in special teams. You saw the freshman, Brett Bell, make the mistake there. So Wisconsin misses postseason for the first time in seven years. Quite a surprise. And really, Illinois is upset about it because it kept them from winning or having a shot to win the Big Ten. Right, and here's how it goes now in the Big Ten. If Illinois can beat Northwestern and have Ohio State beat Michigan, the line I would claim the BCS bid. If Michigan beats Ohio State, the Wolverines get the BCS bid from the Big Ten. Still to come here on the Saturn Halftime Report, we will talk SEC. Julius Patterson coming up with a pick right here, and NC State's defense has been living large. They've got number nine, Maryland, down 9-3. Saturn is working to keep our economy strong in jobs, in commerce, and in spirit. As part of that effort, we're providing interest-free financing on every new coupe, sedan, and wagon we make. Come visit your Saturn retailer and keep America rolling. Every time you use your Discover card, Discover will make a donation to America's relief efforts until we reach our goal of $5 million. Just by doing what you do every day, you can help the victims and families of September 11th. To find out more, call 1-800-DISCOVER or go to discovercard.com. He's our best. Where'd you learn to shoot? Boy Scout, sir. Sent undercover in the most dangerous situations. What is your connection? I have no connection. No. He's in trouble. Tom Bishop's been arrested for espionage. And the game, I'm getting him out, is... We got zero room for error. On. Get out of the way! Seven minutes. Look, I know what I'm doing. Six minutes. Thirty seconds. Get out now. Spy Game. Rated R. At theaters Wednesday. Sports Center in game. This halftime report is presented by Saturn. Now with two distinctively different car lines, the L series and the S series. Tennessee won 16 straight over Kentucky. Cats hadn't even stayed within four touchdowns over the last five, but the Cats had a 14-0 lead when the battleship Lorenzen finds Chase Harp in the end zone and the Cats Trying to pull the stunner of the year up 21-0, but then the Vols come up with a play. Boo Moore gets the tip pass. He'll have it knocked loose and bounce around. Constantine Ritzman Achtung scores, and we're tied. It's now tied again at 28. The Iceman coming. Dante Stallworth for the third time. Tennessee takes his first lead, 35-28, but Jared Lorenzen, the battleship, not done right. Oh, watch him here. He finds his man, Anthony Kelly, tight roping down the right sideline. Ties the score at 35 all. It's 38-35 late. Lorenzen dumps it to Chase Harp, who had a touchdown earlier, and Harp did not rivet that ball to his rib cage, and he coughed it up, and he paid for it, and the Vols escape. 38-35. They've now won 17 in a row over Kentucky, and now, regardless of what they do against Vanderbilt, they will play Florida for the SEC East title on December 1st. Down in the Big 12, Oklahoma and Texas Tech, a trendy upset pick. Nate Hibble. Nate Hibble, Chris Toney, first career touchdown, and the Sooners on top, 13-3 down in Lubbock, but here's the franchise, Cliff Kingsbury. Oh, Ricky gonna have to explain. Oh, he talked some smack before the ball game about a bad time for Oklahoma to show up. He showed up big with that return, gets a touchdown. Take another peek at this, Rod. Watch him break a little tackle, which you don't see against that Sooner defense very often, especially with Calmus going for the ball. Yeah, Calmus went for the ball, Roy Williams in chase, but not enough to get there. That made it 13-10. It's 20-10 now, OU trying to put on the exclamation point, and Hibble makes like Dan Marino by finding Mark Clayton, Oklahoma. Rolls 30 to 13. Sooners were fired up for this game and they take care of Texas Tech. And now 10 and 1, they finish up with the OK State. In the Pac 10, Apple Cup goes to the Huskies 26 14. This means Oregon has the BCS bid from the Pac 10. And the victory bell is going to go to the Trojans just over a minute left and they're up 27 to nothing. Jafar Williams coming up with a ball play. Maryland. 
trying to get back in it against NC State. It's a 9-3 game at the half. Time, being what I'm not, just live my life with what I've got. Loving every minute of it, keep calling the shots. Oh yeah, right there, keep hitting the spot. Don't give a second thought to what the others say. Totally focus when you see what you want, see what you get. Come on, we got the best yet. Just live your life. Got a passion for cheeseburgers? Then you gotta get to DQ. Because right now you can get two DQ cheeseburgers for two dollars or two double cheeseburgers for just three dollars. DQ something different. Make any occasion special with a DQ frozen cake. It's time for you, it's time for you, it's time to spread your wings and do the things you always wanted to do, life's beginning to rhyme, come on baby it's time, it's time for you. This is Sports Center in game, the Saturn halftime report. And welcome outside the Orange Bowl in Miami, where the Hurricanes took care of the Orange by a 59 zip count. Chris Fowler, Lee Corso, and Kirk Curb Street. Kirk, as far as the Maryland NC State game, I told you it's going to be a wild oh, shootout, yeah, offensive it. field goal shootout. Three to one so far. I'm surprised that neither offense is able to execute better. Turnovers obviously a factor. There. Turnovers a factor, but again, I don't know if people around the country realize how talented North Carolina State's defense is. They've let their guard down in a few games in conference, but they're very athletic. They're fired up, playing at home at night. Big chance to shock the ACC fans and I think some of their own fans. So I'm not shocked that the game is close, and in fact that the game is low scoring. But I think North Carolina State will still have the lead into the fourth quarter, but Maryland's going to come back slowly but surely. They'll come back and win this game. I think the team with the best field goal kicker wins this football game, period. There you go. All right, now it's three field goals to one field goal. Speaking of field goals, that's all BYU has against their arch rivals from Utah on the Cougars' home field late third quarter. Oh, the eighth-ranked uh, oh, undefeated it. scoring machine, the team that's topped 50 points six times this year and has gotten sick of hearing that it's only because of bad defenses is not getting it done against a good defense. Utah by far the best defense they've faced. This is right now a pretty, pretty stunning. I, I, knew, I know you thought Utah had a good yeah. chance, but three points? I thought they had a good chance. And I, three points Let me now. personally say that I'm, I'm saddened by the fact that we <laughs> will not continue to hear about BYU and the BCS. It's kind of synonymous. It continued over the last four or five weeks. <laughs> if this holds up, BYU is going to head down to, to Memphis to the Liberty Bowl and enjoy a matchup with Louisville, which I think will still be a great matchup. BYU, Utah. Utah is sick and tired of hearing about BYU and the BCS, and they think it's BS, and that's why they're out hitting them. Period. Well, yeah, but your BCS team at large, Team Washington, was, was out gone. as well. So. Illinois steps in place of them, I think. Stock up Illinois. By the way, that's an amazing game in the Coliseum there with USC clobbering UCLA. More from the studio when you come back. Saturn is working to keep our economy strong in jobs, in commerce, and in spirit. As part of that effort, we're providing interest-free financing on every new coupe, sedan, and wagon we make. Come visit your Saturn retailer and keep America rolling. Few pals, grab a Miller Lite. It's Miller time. Hey guys, hang it out. I'll hang out. How has NCAA football influenced your life? For me, NCAA football is the best. The opportunities are always there. You just have to take advantage of it. It taught me how to develop my mind and achieve my goals. Distance. Reach beyond. NCAA football. Pass it on. 
Back on the Saturn Halftime Report. BYU not quite ready to be quiet about the BCS yet, Rodney. Brandon Dolman against Utah looking for Reno Mahi, who's coming off an appendectomy this week. Well, you know, Wizards just point the wand at that thing, fix it up, he gets in, catch a touchdown pass. Looks pretty healed. It's now 14 to 10. They're about to go to the fourth quarter. Some other games of note. Alabama blows out Auburn. Georgia Tech becomes bowl eligible in this one. And Look at Harvard and Yale. Harvard finishing undefeated for the first time and untied for the first time since 1913. And Carl Morris going off for them. 71 catches on the season for him. Big. Nice job out of Harvard. And the implosion nearly complete for Northwestern as they fall to Bowling Green 43-42. to Rams and Patriots do battle on Sunday night football, 8.30 Eastern time. It's not only Marshall Falk coming back, it's a story of a man named Brady for the Patriots. Tune in for that. Second half's coming. Fixable. The 2002 Mitsubishi Montero Sport. Right now, pay zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2003. TBS Superstation presents Sunday, November 18th. From executive producers Mel Gibson and Jet Li, a Superstation original movie. You can't win! Simply kill them! Billy Zane. Sunday, November 18th, only on TBS Superstation. Go online and download the movie's action-packed video trailer. It's fast and easy with Cox High-Speed Internet Service. Almost overnight, the University of Maryland has arrived. And now that we're here, we're getting out there in big ways. Today, we're the team leader on a NASA mission to study the heart of a comet. We just opened a dazzling new performing arts center. The grade point average of incoming freshmen has grown from 3.0 to 3.76. And then there's the football thing, which makes all of us wonder, what's next month going to be like? Welcome back, 9-3, to three, North Carolina State on top. And we look at the ESPN game track. In that first half of play, turnovers, Maryland to North Carolina State one, but this one right here, huge. Maryland about to score. The ball is not caught. It's intercepted and returned 67 yards. And the missed opportunities, three big drop passes by Maryland. And for NC State, Kiker, three field goals. And that has been the difference so far. Nine to three, the Wolfpack on top. What do you see in those numbers, Mike? Well, when you look at the turnovers, Maryland's used to getting turnovers, not giving two up. But the end, again, the rushing yardage, only 58 yards for Maryland. Their total offensive yards, 129. Didn't have the ball a lot in the first half. Kiker to kick it off. Parson, the deep man, from the five. 25 and almost out to the 30-yard line. And, Mike, when you look at that first half, missed opportunities, field goals, it's not going to win it for you, and also the absence of a very important player. Yeah, you take that interception, Sean Hill, when they were going in, and that was a big momentum uh, drive for North Carolina State. And Bruce Perry, uh, for only to have 58 yards rushing and no catches, he has to play a big part in the second half if they're going to win this football game. They pitch it back to Perry. Turns the corner and a nice job defensively as NC State is right there to make the tackle. Adrian Karsten, what do you got? Honestly, Ron, it took Chuck Amato quite a time to get his team calmed down in the locker room as they went in for the half. Once he did, he just simply brought them back to reality. He said, look, we are not going to beat this team 9-1 on field goals. We're going to have to stick it in the end zone. He told them they were not at all affected or intimidated by that last offensive drive. But he said, it's 60 minutes. You guys are going to have to come out here and start all over again. Okay, Adrian, good to hear your voice. Got this one complete. Almost to the 40-yard line is Julian Gary. Well, he's going to be shy, and it'll be a third down as Patterson makes the tackle. 
Here are some defensive numbers in the first half, by the way. For NC State, Hudson with nine and a half tackles. That is a new career high for him. Holt with three and a half. Jackson for Maryland with seven stops. Whaley with four and a half. And Henderson with four tackles. Third down. They need to take it to the 40-yard line to keep this one going. Perry, man in the hole. That's Fisher who came up and blasted him, but he spun off, as you could see, in a second effort, got the first down. Yeah, again, uh, Bruce Perry's got to have the ball in his hands, carrying it, rushing it, and he's got to be a pass receiver in the second half. Just got to get him in the perimeter, Ron, where he can run uh, wild and get loose on the outside. Bar Fisher with a good hit there. Oh, he was right there. Stepped up into the hole and popped him, but didn't wrap up. And Sean Hill runs to the sideline. They're going to call a timeout, so we'll take it with them. 13-13 left, third quarter. The Suzuki XL7 has more room for your stuff than the Ford Escape or Honda CRV. Or you can get your new XL7 with a third row of seats and rear air conditioning, something you won't find in any other SUV in its class. So seven people can ride in peace and luxury. Unless six are kids, then it's just luxury. The XL7 from Suzuki, official vehicle of the Heisman Trophy Award. I have to go to the bathroom. Suzuki has extended the best deal in the industry. 0% financing for five years. Look, this is a dirty fuel injector. This is a clean one. As you can see, cleaner works better. That's why I use STP fuel injector cleaner in my car. I add STP every time I change my oil. STP, it's basic car maintenance. I wonder how our home equity loan is going. I'll check. Want banks to compete for your home equity loan? At LendingTree.com, fill out one simple form and get up to four offers. When banks compete, you win at LendingTree.com. Makes you happy? Post your resume now. Monster.com. You the monster. Store up on great holiday gifts at Pep Boys. Get custom alloy wheels from only $49 each. And add a set of 40,000-mile truck tires from just $49.99 each. Get your holiday gifts now at Pep Boys. Store up on great holiday gifts at Pep Boys. Buy a Delta Aluminum Toolbox, a Weston Grill Guard or Step Bar, or some cool performance accessories like these slick APC taillights. Get your holiday gifts now at Pep Boys. So we're back, and you might ask yourself, if you're a Maryland fan, why in the world would we burn a timeout this early in the third quarter. Folks, they only had 10 men on the field. And Mike, it goes just back to what Adrian was talking about in you. Lack of focus by Maryland yeah, tonight for lack some of reason. concentration. That's not a good sign to come right out and uh, only have 10 guys go on the field right away. Sean Hill works with a first down from his own 41-yard line. Gives it to Perry. Tries to turn the corner. Nice job defensively, Patterson. Julius Patterson was right there to turn it back inside. Made the tackle himself, but he had a lot of help from a lot of friends quickly. And good, good job by the defensive front of the Wolf Pack to force it outside. Julius Patterson then comes up and finishes off Bruce Ferry in a tackle. Ralph doesn't look happy. No, he doesn't. And he said to Adrian, he doesn't mince words. We've always loved that about him. And he said, you know, that's as poorly as we played in a half all year. Hill zings this one complete. That's Gary. And Gary will step out of bounds just shy of the 50-yard line. Good for seven yards. And it's going to bring up a third down. And they'll need just about a yard and a half. Hudson with the tackle. Hudson already had nine and a half in the first half. That's a career high for him. Ron, Sean Hill can get hot here. And Buddy Green, the defensive coordinator of NC State, says watching the tapes of all the games, his confidence just keeps growing every week. So he's 10-3 and three as a starter. Pretty good player. 
Hill with the option comes down the line. There's your first down. Hudson there to make still another tackle. And he'll have about two and a half yards. Only needed a yard and a half. And he doesn't look like a fast quarterback, but he's four six eight. And uh, when you talk to all the coaches that have to defend him, they say he's faster than he looks. That was a keep design keep the whole way. The biggest thing that coaches say about him, both his own and the opposing coaches, good decision maker. Right. Excellent. Perry tries to break off the tackle. LeVar Fisher right there holding on to his ankle, making sure that he does not break the tackle and get into the secondary. Just keep giving it to him, Ron. He will break one. And you just got to keep feeding your horse the football. And he's the horse, number one. Second down, North Carolina State doing a lot of shifting on defense late. Throws this one too high, and it could have been very dangerous. Perry's only 5'9", but there was pressure coming from Smith. And they were all over him. Corey Smith right there in the quarterback, and you can see that Perry's a little disgusted because he felt like he was open. Third down. And on the near side of the field, the NC State fans getting up, standing and cheering for the defense. Want them to respond again. Ninth play of the Maryland Drive. Three-man rush for the Wolfpack. Got it complete at the 35-yard line for the first down. That ball was thrown right to Scooter Monroe. Julius Patterson had a good break on the football, but uh, Sean Hill put it right in a perfect place. See number 32 sitting right back here. Now he's going to break on the football right here, and he's in pretty good position. But Sean Hill leads him outside, which you, you have to do as a quarterback. You throw it inside, you might get it picked off. So could get it knocked away incomplete. Quarterback draw, but he's going to be hit at the line of scrimmage, and that's Price. Price is there to make the defensive stop, and Maryland again is going to have to play with a second down and long situation rather than getting ahead of the chains. Yeah, you'd always like to get four or more on first down. And again, a busted assignment for Sean Price to get in there that quickly on a draw play. The big guy's not happy. <laughs> he trails 9-3. They swing it out to Perry. Got a blocker in front. And it keeps his feet and gets knocked out of bounds. It's going to be a back out of bounds about 33, Ron. Mm -hmm. LeVar Fisher is the man who uh, bumped him out of bounds in the Wolfpack with a injured player. It's going to be of Maryland, I beg your pardon, Matt Murphy, the senior out of New Haven, Michigan, is the player who's shaken up. Well, Ralph Friedgen and Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, giving the ball to Bruce Perry. You now, he's he was close on that play. But they're uh, putting the ball in his hands here in the second half. I'm sure that was the challenge that the coaches talked about uh, to uh, Bruce Perry at half. It said, you got to get us in a position to win this football game, we're going to get you the football. See if we can see the injury. Just there at the end. Looked like a tackle rolled over Matt Murphy. So Murphy is up, and that's a good sign. Running off the field on his own. The, the numbers on Perry this half, he has run the ball four times for 10 yards, and they have thrown to him uh, for five yards. And they overthrew him one time, too, so they tried to get it a second time. But uh, stay with your best. Third down. Crowd is back up. The line to make is the 25 of NC State. Right over the middle, that's Perry. NC 
inside the 20 yard line and he'll have the first down as Brian Williams makes the tackle. It is a gain of 16 yards. This is a play when you watch on tape, when you watch Maryland on tape, they like to get the ball. Bruce Perry, they're going to bring the motion man in. And what he's going to do is he's going to try to pick inside here. He's going to run a corner and then he's going to come out of the backfield. And it's a zone coverage, so there's nobody to pick, but he's wide open in the uh, just sitting down. First down this time for the 19. 14th play of the drive. Pitchback comes to Perry. Blocker in front. 15, 10, first and goal, Maryland at the six yard line. Patterson defensively, it's a gain of 13. And James Lynch, the big fullback, who weighs about 270 pounds, number five, was out playing search and destroy. Yeah, speed option where the fullback has the first man outside that uh, shows up. And that's the block you're talking about right here, Ron, which is a good block by Lynch. Perry, right side, hit at the line of scrimmage. He'll fight forward for a yard. Burnett is there, the one of the first ones to make the hit, along with Hudson. Reese Davis will check with you again. All right, Ron, Beehive Boot, Utah and BYU. Brandon Dolman had gotten his team back within four, but here comes Lance Rice looking for Josh Lyman after he escaped a sure sack, and Lyman from the west wing gets it down there close. Adam Tate punched it in on the very next play, and Utah is taking control in Provo again, 21-10. Second down and goal, Maryland. Hill sets deep in the pocket, pressure on him, drills it for the end zone. Touchdown, Maryland, it's Gary. Julian Gary got by Corey Smith, who was applying pressure on the quarterback. Smith got out of the pocket, or Hill, I should say, got away from him and drilled it for the touchdown. Same play, Ron, and the bunch set where you get the corner route, you get the in route, and you get Perry out in the flat. And they made the right decision to go to Gary. Bernard is the holder. He's the punter. Novak attempting the extra point to try to make this a one-point Terrapin lead. It's a good pass. The kick is right downtown. And we'll take a timeout with 8.51 left to play in the third quarter. Our new score, Maryland 10, North Carolina State 9. Want to start a family? Right now? I just got supplemental insurance. What's that? Aflac. Well, if we get sick, our health insurance won't cover things like lost pay mm. or other expenses. This does. What's it called? Aflac! I don't know. Uh. <laughs> Aflac! Aflac. Ask about it at work. <laughs> The Suzuki XL7 has more room for your stuff than the Ford Escape or Honda CRV. Or you can get your new XL7 with a third row of seats and rear air conditioning, something you won't find in any other SUV in its class. So seven people can ride in peace and luxury. Unless six are kids, then it's just luxury. The XL7 from Suzuki, official vehicle of the Heisman Trophy Award. I have to go to the bathroom. Suzuki has extended the best deal in the industry. 0% financing for five years. When my time on earth is gone and my activities here are past, I want they bury me upside down and my critics can kiss my ass. ESPN's presentation of primetime college football is brought to you by Suzuki. Rush to your Suzuki dealer today or call 1-877-BY-SUZUKI. On campus at NC State, 
The matchup tonight, the number nine Maryland Terpins trying to lay claim to the ACC championship. First time in a very long time for them. And MC State trying to rain on their parade. Maryland came alive that time. A lot more bounce in their step than they had in the first half. Very high kick. Going to come down at the five-yard line. This is Golden. And Golden trips over his own man. Mike, how about the touchdown? Same formation. Now NC State's in man coverage. So you got a man situation right here on the corner route. You're going to have the inside route, the back carry in the flat. He gets picked up. Gary runs a corner route on Brian Williams. The ball is thrown perfectly. Just barely beating the interception. <laughs> yeah, just a tenth of a second more, and uh, the defensive back would have been able to knock it down, but not the case, and the Terps are on top, 10-9. Phillip Rivers. Bates to ground, pressure is on, and that one underthrown, and he got belted just as he delivered the ball by Charles Hill. You, you talked about it looks like Maryland's bouncing around yeah. on offense. It did. They did look around, look like they are uh, bouncing more. Here, Charles Hill with a good hit on Phillip Rivers. Now the defense got to do their part. The Wolf Pack, now is getting, they need some first downs to keep Maryland's offense off the field. Mike, somebody else who went quiet in the second quarter was Willie White of the Wolf Pack. And he's a weapon that they like to use. Robinson to the right side, short yardage to the 25 as Randy Starks will make the tackle. Adrian Karsten will check with you again. Phil Rivers was so fired up in that NC State locker room at halftime, he sprinted to the front of the line, wanted to lead that team back onto the field. Amato comes to the front of the line, pulls him out of line, back into the locker room, Ron, and said, the best way we're going to have a chance to win this game is for you to settle down. Just calm down. Go out there. Play that 10 yards at a time game that you've hit, become so good at in the past year but just calm down Ron, when he got out here they actually put him on the stationary bicycle to get some of that energy out of his system <laughs> cannon in the ball game the backup quarterback and wide receiver pass is thrown complete incomplete what a hit by the defensive back causing the ball to be coughed up and it's randall jones who knocks it away from peterson this is a big series because maryland's going to get the football back right now when it got everything going whaley with yep. good pressure on rivers whaley really put the boom on him now again maryland's got a chance to turn up the heat on the wolf pack only the second punt of the night Carson, the deep man. Herbert stands back at the 10-yard line, gets a good pass. Driving spiral. Carson all the way back to the 22. At the 30, and it will be stopped at the 32. Well, tomorrow on ABC Sports, final round coverage of the EMC World Golf Championships from Japan. The U.S. team of Tiger Woods and David Duvall looking to defend their title against the best from around the globe. And they made uh, quite a recovery today. They shot a 63. They trail New Zealand by three strokes. Tomorrow, 4 Eastern on ABC. Sean Hill. Takes the run, pressure on him, throws his pass to it behind the receiver, Gary, and they say incomplete, he couldn't hold on. Bruce Perry getting a little break right now because uh, he was active in the last drive. Six rushes, two receptions. Uh, the, the getting the ball back to him. Uh, give, give him a little breather right now and get him right back in the game. Mark Riley is his replacement, and he's a big fella at 6'3", 218. Gets the handoff, tries to bounce it to the outside. Ricky Fowler says you're not going anywhere. It's going to be a third down and about 11 yards. <laughs> So NC State trying to answer defensively here to get the ball back for their offense. But a game of shifting momentum, Mike. I felt like Maryland had it early, then NC State took it away. Maryland just recaptured it. NC State trying to grab it away again. Here, 
very deep drop. Good coverage in the secondary. Gets the, he just threw this one away. That is a smart play. It was double coverage on his receiver, and Sean Price was all over. And there was nothing for him to throw the football to. The deep routes were covered, and uh, Scooter Monroe, number 25, was covered in the flat. Jericho Cotchery is the deep man for NC State. Only the third punt of the night as Barnard is standing back for the kick. That was big, that series. At the 17-yard line. Off the side of his foot. And it's going to be touched down at the 36-yard line. It's only a 31-yard kick. So we'll take a break. 632 left in the third. 10-9 Maryland. That first half was a disgrace. Davis, you keep playing the way you did. You might as well just go home and watch the rest of the game on TV. Okay. Thanks. You just got Cox Digital Cable. I don't think he's coming back. Third dark roast, great vanilla creamer, sugar. For the freshest coffee going made your way, come to Circle K. We've got a full coffee bar with a variety of special blend coffees and flavored creamers. Thanks, Chief. Did I trade you for a cappuccino? Buy five cups of coffee, get one free, and enter for a chance to win $10,000 at Circle K, the official pit stop of NASCAR. On Sunday, NFL Countdown. Build a stadium for the Vikings. Can we get more back would. over next to me? I need to sit next to more. This week, Bill Parcells returns to the team. Let's play somebody. Let's get somebody that hits back. Marshall Falk is back. Go head to head with the league's MVP. I think we got our swagger back. And Jeff Garcia, behind the man who makes the Niners' offense go. Plus previews from all around the league. Get all your NFL news and pregame analysis first with Sunday NFL Countdown beginning 11 a.m. Sunday on ESPN. Of the famous tower here on campus. Tonight's game being seen live around the world by U.S. servicemen and women and their families through the facilities of the American Forces Radio and Television Service. Two tight ends, two wide receivers out to the right. Gray in motion. But they'll go with Robinson in very, very short yardage. Reese Davis, let's check with you. Victory Bell game, Ron, USC and UCLA. I want you to watch the savvy move of a veteran coach, even though it's his first year in college. Pete Carroll, oh, avoiding the Gatorade. But SC, high academic standards. Oh, they've got two buckets for you ready, ready for you, Pete. You're just going to have to take that one right in the kisser, 27-0. 10 to 9, our score. Second down and 11 for the Wolfpack. Robinson gets redirected from the right side to the left side of his quarterback. Rivers zips this one complete to Cotchery. Still fighting his way, and he's going to take it to the 44 yard line. Mike, I know that you share in this thought right here. Our best wishes going out tonight to our friend Ed Leinbach, watching tonight from his hospital bed in Hagerstown, Maryland. He is a very big Terrapin fan. His son is on this crew and is uh, a favorite of all of ours, and we say get well soon, Ed. Wish him the best. About to go under five minutes. Left to play, third quarter. From Carter Finley Stadium, Raleigh, North Carolina. Wolfpack trying to put a hurt on the drive to the championship by the Maryland Terrapins. Pressure from the outside. This pass caught at the 35-yard line by Cotchery. Tries to break the tackle. There's a flag down back at the 43-yard line. But a big gainer. And now let's see who the marker is against. I think it's going to be on Maryland for pass interference. On another receiver that didn't make the catch or a personal foul. There's contact when the ball was in the air. Right you are, Mike. Right. 
See if we can pick it up, the contact right here. Yeah. While the ball's in the air. Eight catches, 97 yards in this ball game tonight. Only a sophomore out of Birmingham, Alabama. Been a favorite receiver of the Alabama quarterback, Philip Rivers. Think they got something going. And it has worked really well tonight. This pass interferes. Picks the intended receiver and Denard Wilson. They're going to say Denard had his left arm on the uh, back of Sterling Hicks, holding. On the outside, number 13, yep, he stretched the jersey in front of the official. Ralph doesn't agree, but it's a good call. So the penalty moves it to the 15 and a half yard line. And here's where the Maryland defense has got to stand tall. And they've been tough in here all, yeah. all night. Well, they forced every... It has all not been a touchdown scored by NC State. Little risky. Robinson will take it to the 10-yard line. We're going to have to go back and look at this one. Did they leave it on the ground, Mike? No, he put it between his legs. Philip Rivers, but... East Carolina ran this play successfully Thursday night, so Maryland stayed at home. He just reaches it in, gives it to him. But see, everybody stays home. Becomes a pillow fight in there, in a phone booth. E.J. Henderson making the tackle for the Turks. Second down. They need about five. Rivers. Most picked off by Rendell Jones. Oh boy. He's going to all the way back home tonight. Think <laughs> about what could have been because he could have reversed the tables. NC State oh, had the huge exactly. interception when Maryland was about to score. He could have done the same thing. Well, they're trying to get the ball to Brian Peterson. Peterson. Randall Jones shut him off. But Randall Jones probably saying, You threw it too hard, Philip. <laughs> or I could have held on to it. That's out of Frederick, Maryland. It is third down. with the cover Sterling Hicks was the man that they wanted and the field goal unit comes on again yeah, another win for the defense of Maryland but uh, Cox got turned around is able to get back and locate the football and make sure Sterling Hicks doesn't make this catch that's really a good athletic move because you're right he was looking over yeah, one shoulder had to turn spinning. back to the other he was spinning field goal attempt from the near hash mark 27 yards And Packers perfect, four of four. NC State goes back on top with three minutes, 45 seconds remaining in the third quarter. We go to break with the Wolf back on top by two, 12-10. She wore white? She put her past behind her. But you're missing the point of the story. The groom's father-in-law hires him to run the mismanaged shipping department of the family business. No honeymoon? A week in a while. That's nice. Not bad, but keep up. The kid turns to FedEx Ground. They give him affordable nationwide B2B delivery with a money-back guarantee. And he gives Daddy Dearest a high-quality, low-cost lesson in who's the boss. Who is the boss? The kid. The kid is now the, the boss? The kid is now the boss. That's the story? That's it. your machine get this is mike leave a message hi this is jim's video calling two videos camp cleavage and undercover babes are overdue again please return those as soon as possible thank you i think we got a fourth getting the guys together grab a miller light it's miller time camp cleavage and undercover babe Comes in 
handy, huh? It's a lifesaver. We're looking for a new VP of our Northeast operations. Stop by my office later. Hey, Kevin, aren't you the VP of Northeast operations? Imagine what the journal could do for you. Get eight weeks of the journal for just 38 cents a day, a 50% savings. Call 800-228-6605. That's 800-228-6605. So NC State goes back on top, 12-10. Tonight's Aflac trivia question. Who was the last person to win 10 Division 1A games in his first season as a head coach? I know that answer. Answer coming up later on. Brad Edwards, who does that, Aflac, told me the answer, so I'm supposed to surprise you, and I'm not going to. You know, you know who it is, right? Yes. Okay. Carson, the deep man, as you look into the eyes of Bruce Perry on the far sideline, you got to get him going again. Carson, from the goal line. Carson better put that ball away. Boy, carrying it very loosely as he got a hit. And it was Reed on the special teams making the tackle. And a reminder, tomorrow, week 10 of Sunday NFL Countdown, Chris Berman of the gang are joined again in the studio by Bill Parcells. And they'll check up on Ray Lewis and the Ravens' defense. Can they lead the way back to the Super Bowl? And Jeff Garcia, is he the new prototype quarterback in the National Football League? In the first half, Ron had 58 yards rushing. Already in the second half, I think he's at 34, 34 yards. So they're using him a little bit more here in the third quarter. Good coverage in the secondary. Now going to throw this one away. And again, a very good decision. Reese Davis, let's go back to you. Ron, you saw BYU getting right down to cases. It's 21-10. BYU's driving and down. Brandon Dolman, we lose Staley, begging for it out on the side. Now he breaks it off, slips up field and scores. Makes it 21-16. Cougars going for two. Little option pitch. Staley will take care of that. It's a three-point game now. Three and change left to go. Be a great finish there yeah. in that game. That yeah. lot, lot of riding for BYU. Listen to this crowd. Third down. The situation they need to take it out to the 33-yard line. They fake blitz. They stay at home. Hill under pressure. Price will sack him. And now here comes in a late flag. Matt Crawford got beat. can see what the coaches on the sidelines say. Decline the penalty. Let's get the defense off the field. Let's get the special teams out there and put Cotteri back as the deep man and all of a sudden ride this wave of momentum. Maryland had it to open the second half and the Wolfpack has garnered it away from them. Fourth punt. Bernard waits one yard deep in the end zone. Good driving kick. Patrick calls for the fair catch and he makes it on the fingertips at the 43 yard line. The answer to tonight's Aflac trivia question Who was the last person to win 10 Division I-A games in his first season as head coach? Rick Neuheisel at Colorado, 10 and 2, back in 1995. You know who I guessed, of course, Terry Bowden. Exactly. At, at, at Auburn uh, in his first year after he left Sanford, but uh, I was wrong. Friedgen's one away from doing that. Kenny Hatfield at Clemson in 1990 went 10 and 2. Rivers and company back on the field. Middle screen. Good heavens, what a hit. The ball is incomplete, and that's Sterling Hicks. Rod Littles. Who is not a big guy. Got hit by Littles, oh. and whoo. That's one where you, something wrong when you throw that It'll lead him in to uh, Littles, but uh, Littles did a good job of reading the quick screen. 
Hicks is only 165 pounds. 6'1", 165. Wow. Well, that shows you what a tough game it can be. Willie Wright in motion. Tried to get him out on the pattern, but the pass thrown underneath and actually across the 50 and down to the 47. Now it's going to be a third down, and they'll need about one yard for the first. The other thing Maryland's going to look back in this football game, a lot of missed tackles out in space when the ball's delivered to the, the wide pass receivers, and uh, they just missed so many tackles. That should have been a four- or five-yard play. It's third down and one. nine catches 106 yards and a timeout has been called and we're going to stay right here with 138 showing on the clock I think Chuck a model right here wants to take a timeout because this is very important to get this first down because you talked about momentum momentum's with North Carolina State right now and this is a big play for the uh, NC State offense, so he wants to take time out, get the best play he can possibly get here to get this first down, and talk about it. Let's go. Okay. Well, tomorrow ESPN Sunday Night Football, the St. Louis Rams take on the New England Patriots. Kurt Warner still nursing that sprained right thumb. He's got seven interceptions in the past two ball games. But Marshall Falk is healthy at 183 last week. Rams and Patriots tomorrow night, 8.30 Eastern time. Oh, yeah! Yeah, momentum is a funny thing. And how you, you can get it, then all of a sudden you can lose it, and you find it virtually impossible to retrieve. Now, Maryland came out in the second half, even though they had to call the timeout because of only 10 men on the field. Still, that was a nice drive. Nice drive. And they, they kept with what has gotten them to their current record. And I'll tell you, NC State is about to wrestle it back away from them. Robinson. Just drills Wilson, puts a head down and goes over the top of him. First down, Wilpon. Yeah, Chuck Amato said about Ray Robinson, not one guy's going to bring him down. He's a pretty strong runner. Dick Forte, the running back coach, really uh, talking to him as he runs by him. Now Hannon, the reserve quarterback, is lined up at tailback. Let's see if he got a trick play here. Yep, they're going to... No, now they're going to move Patterson, or Peterson, I should say, under center. The wide receiver, number two, and here comes a keeper on his part. <laughs> the reason North Carolina State does this, because when you run the option, and Maryland runs the option, when you run the option, you limit the coverages that you're going to face because nobody wants to be called uh, to have a uh, man coverage scheme on against an option where somebody's running with their back turned to the football. So uh, everybody likes to have a little option in their arsenal. Rivers from a shotgun. Swings it out to him, breaks up the tackle by Wilson, and the extra effort gets him the first down. Henderson will finish the tackle, but Wilson had him, and he missed the stop. Going back again to talk about Ray Robinson. Not one guy's going to bring him down. He's too strong. you got to tackle him low. Wilson tries to tackle him too high here. And again, missed tackles by Maryland. Well, Wilson has missed two, and you have to wonder, that's been a problem spot. He had to pull the hamstring. You know, Foxworth, they took the red shirt off him last week, and you have to wonder if they may not have to bring the youngster back in the ballgame. Peterson again pitches it back to Hannon, the reserve quarterback. They wanted to throw it, and he's going to be bulldog down back at the 45-yard line. This is a play Gary Blackney uh, knew was coming and uh, had the right defense on with Rod Littles coming. So that's the end of the third quarter. We'll take a timeout. And as we head to the final 15, 12-10, North Carolina State. The ACC Big Ten Challenge, presented by 989 Sports, begins Tuesday, November 27th.
Suzuki XL7 has more room for your stuff than the Ford Escape or Honda CRV. Or you can get your new XL7 with a third row of seats and rear air conditioning, something you won't find in any other SUV in its class. So seven people can ride in peace and luxury. Unless six are kids, then it's just luxury. The XL7 from Suzuki, official vehicle of the Heisman Trophy Award. I have to go to the bathroom. Suzuki has extended the best deal in the industry. 0% financing for five years. It's different down here. NASCAR Thunder 2002 EA Sports. It's in a game. Rated E for everybody. Olympus Stylus Cameras. Performance meets style again. Nothing's impossible. Olympus. Stuttgart. Auckland. Osaka. Rio. Lima. Santiago. Pretoria. Oslo. When your business takes you around the world, you can get fast, secure, remote access from over 2,000 points with AT&T's high-speed network. Small world, huh? So, second down, they have to take this ball all the way down to the 20-yard line. So what you want to do right here, if you can pick up 10 or a dozen, put yourself in position to have a chance on third down. First play of the fourth quarter. Rivers, middle screen. Robinson, bounces to the outside. How about picking up? Well, yeah, it's just as I said, on the first down play. Maybe 14 yards is what they're going to finish with. Jackson defensively in the game track. The third quarter. NC State, three trips in the red zone, three field goals. Maryland, first drive of the second half, 53 yards and a touchdown. And they kind of grabbed the momentum back. They were doing what got them to this point of the season. But right now, NC State trying to take momentum back. And in a way they have, kicking the field goal and going back on top, 12-10. Third down, they need the 20-yard line. Rivers lobs this one. And he thought his receiver was going to continue the route, and he broke it off. Pottery. Another good job by Maryland's defense. Forcing the fourth down play. So Rivers looks to the sideline. Field goal unit is not going on because, as I mentioned, Packer does not have a real long field goal to his credit. In fact, he has his longest one tonight. Kicked one from 41, but they'll go for it. Rivers stepping up over the middle. It is incomplete. Under throw, and he was trying to go to Peterson. Ron, the reason that, you know, in the position on the field, 29-yard line, there's no sense to punting. So you try to go for it, pick up the first down. Uh, I don't know if I wouldn't have tried the field goal, but uh, if he can't hit it from there, then that's Chuck Amato's decision. So Kiker had kicked his longest of his career tonight, 41 yards, but that one would have been Mike in the vicinity of 47 yards. Another momentum turn. Now Maryland needs to take advantage of this. And they come out of the nine formation with big James Lynch, number five, at the fullback spot. And Perry is behind him. Option play. Lynch in front with the block. Perry gets met. 
And knocked down after a short game by Jamison. And Reese Davis will check with you again. Run BYU in Utah. Cougars on the move. They'd already run the option play for a big game once. Might as well try it again. And Utah not there. Luke Staley, the nation's fourth leading rusher going in. And the Cougars have the lead. They can make it a four-point game, but Matt Payne hurts the ball club looking at left, and the Utes have a chance down three. Okay, the touchdown looked like a forward uh, pitch, didn't it? On second down, Perry. Short yardage. He'll take it to the 35-yard line. Patterson and Labar Fisher combining on the stop. Now, you talk about big plays in the ball game as far as momentum. Terps need something right here. Yeah, they really do. And the Wolfpack uh, defense, Buddy Green, uh, has come up big every series except one. They need to take the ball to the 40-yard line. Hill sets deep. Got his man perfectly thrown. I mean, that's well executed to Scooter Monroe. In stride, just put it right in his breadbasket. Hudson makes the tackle, but Maryland will move the chains. Now, Marcus Hudson, the freshman corner, is going to be on Scooter Monroe, but double dig route where both receivers are going inside. Matt Murphy, the tight end play Perry not much there well Perry, very well schooled against the option of Wimsack making the stop on that play yeah you're right uh, Buddy Green again talking about the defensive coordinator a uh, longtime uh, coordinator here and then he became the head coach of Chattanooga and came back when Chuck Amato got the job very sound defensive coach and sound against the option tonight Clock runs, and we're now under 12 minutes left in our ball game. Number nine, Maryland, trailing by two to North Carolina State. Got this one complete, and tackle. Williams breaks another tackle, and it'll be a first down for Maryland inside the 45-yard line of the Wolfpack. It is good for 15 yards. A lot of times when we see games late in the year, you see a lot of missed tackles because a lot of teams will stop coaching, tackling, and uh, the fundamentals. Be, they become more group and more team-oriented. But both these teams work very hard on fundamentals late in the season. But there's a lot of missed tackles That tonight. was LeBar Fisher who missed that one, as you could see on the replay. On first down, Perry tripped up behind the line of scrimmage. Nice job by Bryant. Adrian Karsten, uh, let's check with you. Well, as far as fundamentals are concerned, as Coach is talking about, I think NC State has played with more emotion now, but here's where Coach Amato hopes the muscle takes over. A guy who loves to lift weights himself, obviously. This week, early in the week, Sunday and Tuesday, had this defensive line lift harder, upper body, shocking the body, hope that they will recover now late in the week and late in the game. Their upper body strength controls the offensive line of Maryland. Okay, Adrian, good to hear your voice. Down the sideline, got him open, Gary. Out of bounds, inside the 20-yard line. It is a first down and 10 for Maryland. 13 yards on the play, and all of a sudden again, that offense is clicking. It happened on the opening series of the half, and now on his first series of the second. Do you remember uh, Maryland throwing that corner route and the receiver dropping it? He was wide open. We talked about it. They came right back to Gary and bit, bit Hud worked on Hudson. So, as I said, they moved it to begin the third quarter. Now they move it to begin the fourth quarter. Hill with the option. He's going to keep this one. Has five, has ten, and it will be... Let's see now. Well, from where they have spotted him, they're going to say his knee touched down at the ten-yard line, so he'll be a yard short. It'll be a gain of nine. Holt and Fisher on the stop. We haven't called Holt's name very much in no. the second half. What makes the option so tough is you got to stop Perry. So you got to have somebody on the pitch, man. And all of a sudden, the, the, the defensive player on the quarterback falls down, and the quarterback gains 10 yards. Audible called by Sean Hill. You could see James Lynch turn and say something to Perry, his tailback. blocking that big fullback is going to go inside the seven to the six. Terrence Holt down at the bottom of the pile. 
Anderson made the stop for the Wolfpack. Another nice drive by Maryland. Uh, North Carolina State needs to step in right here. Make it a game of field goals. Tenth play of the drive. Hudson play. Hill's going to keep it, and he will score. Matt Crawford, number 78, with a paving block. The big junior out of Moravia, New York. Got to go for two here, too, Ron. 16 to 12, only down four, or ahead four. Design play here. They seal everything inside. They're so good with the option inside the 10-yard line. Sean Hill scored many touchdowns on that play this year. So with a four-point lead, they will go for two. Hill rolls the pocket. They flood to the right. Pressure is on. Throws this one into a pack. And it goes incomplete. That was Hall, Jarek Hall, who was coming after the quarterback. Yeah, that, that play was a bust from the time it was snapped. So we'll take a timeout. 932 remaining in our ball game and our new score. Maryland 16, North Carolina State 12. is Silverado Heavy Duty. The most powerful heavy duty pickup you can get. Silverado Heavy Duty. More truck from Chevy. Right. <laughs> you can dunk, but you can't dip. Your dip is gone, baby. What are you talking about? No dip. Introducing new Tostito Scoops. Let me tell you something, Bill. I put the hip in shit. Watch this. With the bite-sized, bowl-shaped design for the perfect dip every time. New Tostito Scoops. Whoa. The dip lover's chip. <laughs> this is my house. Yes, it is. No, this is my house. You guys got to go. <laughs> also great with new Queso Supreme Dip. This is the hardest thing I've ever done. I mean, these people were like family to me. Remember I met Jeannie at the company picnic? Ah, it was the best thing ever happened to you. Yeah, taking the new job was a tough decision. <laughs> Deciding what to do with my 401k money was another. I didn't want to mess it up. I called T. Rowe Price. You know, you told me about the mutual funds. Uh-huh. Yeah, well, they sent me a rollover kit, you know? Took me through it step by step. I made it easy for you. Yeah, piece of cake. Call the rollover specialists at T. Rowe Price. It's going to be a good job. Yeah. to 12, Maryland has retaken the lead, and we'll show you one of the reasons. The young man who's on the phone, Mike, first half, second half. Yeah, he's, he's been very comfortable in the second half, and talking to Charlie Taft, the offensive coordinator, I said, when you guys got there, did you really think Sean Hill could do it? And he said, I wasn't sure. He said, I wasn't sure where he, whether he could run the option that we needed, throw the passing game, but he said he's just caught fire, and uh, he really works hard at it. Novak to kick it off. And this one is returnable. It's going to come down at the six to Golden. Golden tries to bounce it to the outside and is not going to be able to. Let's go back to Reese Davis. Utah BYU, Ron. It's fourth down and ten. Last chance for the youth. Watch this formation. I want you to watch Jordan Gross. Big number 69. Tackle eligible. Of course, he has to report these days. He looks like a running back to me. Picks up the first down. So on the next play, Lance Wright. The chance to get his team closer. New. Picked off by Gennaro Guilford. And that seals it for the Cougars. They remain unbeaten. Or they will in seven seconds. It's 24-21. 
our situation, Maryland had taken the lead. They lost it again. They've gone back on top, 16 to 12. Quick screen, pumping traffic by Peterson. Boy, Mike, there were a lot of opposing jerseys around that play where the pass was thrown. Yeah, Rob Little has had a good fourth quarter. He really was right there. I mean, he makes the best play on Brian Peterson you could actually do on this play. Watch number 33. They throw the quick screen out here, and here he is tied up right here with a blocker, and he gets a hold of that ankle and says, uh, make a wish. If you can look, Cotri's looking around with his palms toward the sky saying, I did everything yeah, I, I could do. do it. I couldn't keep him out of the play. Rivers under pressure. Feeds this one long, and on the comeback, got it, Peterson. Peterson was being double covered, and Mikey circled back and came back to help his quarterback. And that's what you have to do as a wide receiver. Phillip Rivers bought time. Bernard Wilson has had problems with a hamstring, and you can see he tried to run off the field and grabbed the hamstring. He's down. Phillip Rivers just with a nice job. No pressure. He strings it out. Now the receiver, Brian Peterson, comes back to his quarterback for the completion. I'd love to find out that it's that it's a cramp, but uh, with we'll, the problems that he's had with the hamstring. And we'll see Foxworth now, the true freshman, number mm -hmm. six at the corner spot. Injured Maryland player is DeMar Wilson. That's an injury that is terribly debilitating, and there's not a heck of a lot you can do but give it rest. So as Mike suggested, Dominique Foxworth, the true freshman, at Randallstown, Maryland, number six will come into the lineup. He's trying to get off the field there. He's uh, saying he's hurt. Yep. This is when I saw him, and he, well, he'll, he'll just go down here. He can't, he can't put any weight on it. First and ten, NC State. Rivers got it complete at the 40-yard line. That's Troy Graham, the sophomore out of Miami, and it's good for 12 yards. We, we've seen two good quarterbacks tonight. Phillip Rivers is in complete control of his offense, game. like Sean Hill is for the Terrapins. And Phillip Rivers doesn't make many mistakes. Good, strong arm. He can get the short post in there. Clock runs. We're now under eight minutes left to play in the ball game. It's Cotchery in motion, and Rivers steps up, throws it to him. Cotchery, boy, in double figures now on receptions tonight. It'll be another North Carolina State first down. Now these two players from Alabama, Cotchery and Rivers, uh, have it down tonight. They got a feel for this game. Phillip Rivers going to move, slide to the right, little sidearm throw to Cotchery in front of Tony Jackson. Ten catches, 119 yards. Look at that first career 100-plus game for him. Blitz right up the middle. Rivers throws it. Hot route complete at the 20-yard line to Willie Wright to tie it in. Jackson will make the tackle. Willie Wright, Ron, has soft hands. And on this catch, he shows you why young receivers need to look the ball in. Watch him make this catch. Watch him, his eyes on that football right there, and he brings it in. Just a great catch concentration. Got it down to play with here. It's second down and about a yard and a half. But they give it to Robinson. They want to go ahead and pick it up. And you can see behind the blocking uh, up front, of that offensive line, Derek Green, the center, number 73, was helping lead. Jackson makes the tackle. They're calling a timeout. We'll see what the kind of measurement and what kind of spot that he got. Do you think he made it? Ralph Friedgen takes, takes a glance up at the clock. It looks like he's going to be a little short. <laughs> 
I learned finally what she's been Oh, yeah. <laughs> now, you yeah, I, I was uh, looking out on the field. I yeah, said, look at that net return yeah. here, Mike. Because. A little short. Right. <laughs> look at the right monitor. Yeah, Philip Rivers. Uh, most of his completions tonight have been in this 15-yard range. Uh, you can see 16 pass completions, and then you take the the uh, four, uh, five passes, these flares and uh, quick screens behind the line of scrimmage. So they haven't challenged Maryland deep. They haven't had to. Whistle back in, quarterback sneak. Rivers, he's going to have the first down, it would appear. And what Chuck Amato would like to do is use a lot of clock nice right here say. and, uh, and punch us in for a touchdown. But they haven't been good inside the 20. Well, they got to score their first touchdown of the night. They have not been able to score a touchdown. They're going to have to have one here because the field goal would only draw them to within one. Rivers, quick over the middle, Willie Wright, the tight end. Inside the 10, he's down to the 8, Foxworth defensively. And here's where I think they might try to go back toward Foxworth's direction again. Keep working on him. Find out if the freshman's going to be up for the challenge. Move the tight end out there. Good catch. They're going to put him on him again. They dropped to the end zone, just threw it away. Coach Jackson was the man who was closest to it. But I think Rivers just did a very smart thing. There's yeah. no sense in taking a chance down here. He was trying to go to right against Foxworth, uh -huh. but Foxworth was up for the challenge. Now third down again for the pack. Now they bring in two tight ends. Willie Wright will leave, and let's see what this brings as far as the formation. They may say to Ray Robinson, you got to pick up two. Third down. The line to make is the six. And they give it to Robinson. Cuts it up into the hole. Boy, he's close, but I don't know. He didn't make it. Now you got a call. 527 on the clock. Give it to Robinson again? I think I would. You'd like to find out how much short you are. This is why coaches get a lot of money to make this call. Well, speaking of that, we need to get a lot of money because of that call. Timeout, 521 left, 16 to 12. Turn right here. Excuse me, do you know where the art museum is? It's two blocks up. Thank you. You're into art? Oh, oh yeah. Sculpture, mostly. I mean, uh, I like paintings too, but... The 2002 Mitsubishi Galant. She was helpful. Right now, pay zero down, zero interest, and zero payments till 2003. TBS Superstation presents Sunday, November 18th. From executive producers Mel Gibson and Jet Li, a Superstation original movie. You can't win! Sunday, November 18th, only on PBS Superstation. Go online and download the movie's action-packed video trailer. It's fast and easy with Cox High-Speed Internet Service. Mouth football right up until kickoff. A little football amongst friends. Sunday NFL Countdown, Sunday mornings at 11 Eastern, only on ESPN. Switch. Sure. Introducing the all-new Chevy Avalanche. The only vehicle that switches from an SUV to a pickup. Good idea. 
Chevy Avalanche. Like a rock. 16 to 12, Maryland Legion. They break the huddle. This has been the situation for the Wolfpack tonight. All of these drives resulting in field goals. Fourth down. They need about a yard and a half for the first down. Rivers. Plays it complete at the one yard line. He's got the best hands you'd ever want to see. Well, his head coach, as I told you earlier in the ballgame, said he's the best on a tight end that he has seen. He just looks the ball in, runs a hairpin route, and he breaks away from the linebacker and makes that catch. E.J. Henderson on coverage. First and goal. Twelfth play of the drive. Rivers with a man in motion. Turns, hands it, gives it to Robinson. A win a defensive stop by the Maryland Terrapins, E.J. Henderson. He's the guy you know you got to look for. That's a loss of four yards. What well, a big play by E.J. Henderson. You talk about great players coming up at the right time. He got penetration, Ron. That's what Maryland wanted there. Tenth tackle for Tenth tackle e. for him and three for losses. Good heavens, what a big one. That might have been a trick. Jackson is there to collar him, and Cotterie is shaken up. Well, Tony Jackson accelerated to catch Cotterie. That was a great play call by Marty Galbraith. The offensive coordinator looked like it was going to score. And just a great job right here. Tony Jackson to make that tackle. Third and two. Goal to go. Rivers, play action. Rolls it, still rolling. And throws it. Touchdown, NC State. Hunter Jackson. with the extra point attempt. He's got it. So with three minutes, 59 seconds left to play in our ball game, 19 to 16 for the home team. And normally when you roll this far, the sideline becomes the 12th defender, but deep in the corner, he finds the open receiver, Jack. touchdown. Phillip Rivers, you got to give him so much credit. He just hangs in here. Contre Jackson, the fullback, is going to get tied up right here. He's getting tied up right here with the linebacker more. But the more time Phillip Rivers buys, Jackson gets loose and makes the catch. A great play by a young quarterback. Boy, the defender, as you said, had him, he had him all hung up and then let him go. Hill, play action, runs out of harm's way, going to slide at the 25-yard line. Williams is the man that was coming up to make the hit on him. Maryland was good just before halftime in the two-minute offense. Now they're in that same situation, needing a field goal to tie. Clock runs, 317, 316. Hill short drop, and he threw that one behind the receiver. 
Parson. We've seen Parson a lot tonight, more than usual, but he's one receiver that's been able to hold on to the football. Yeah. But he couldn't on that one because it was too far behind him. And the crowd is going to be a factor in this third down play. The situation, third down. Maryland needs the 29-yard line. That's four yards away. Will this young man get an opportunity to come on? Oh, he's got him open. Throws it complete to Murphy, the tight end on the near sideline. Good play calling. And he had the defenders going the wrong way. It's a gain of 10 and it's first down. And that silences the crowd for the moment with 3.04 to play. And the Bull Scouts is watching, uh, knowing that their fate is being decided right now. Gary Stoke in there from the Peach Bowl. They're all saying, hey, hey, you know, they're all getting along right now, but uh, they're hoping something different happens for each of them. Hill on play action, deep over the middle, got a man at the 35-yard line, it's Parson at the 10, at the 5, and he's tackled, he lost the ball in the end zone, it's a touchback! Mike, I want to see a replay, unless it was coming out, I thought he was down. the man who came up with the football. Almost looked like he threw the ball down. Was he trying to celebrate? Did he think he was in the end zone or what? Here's the pass play to Parson. We'll see what happens at the end. Great hustle. Well, it just oh, it came was out. a fumble. It did come out. It was a fumble right there. That was Lamont Reed who grabbed his arm away, and Fisher made the recovery. Robinson with a short gain. Defensive coaches always preach. You never give up on the play. Now this, look at North Carolina State's defensive backs working to catch him and to make that play. That play by Lamont Reed may be the biggest play in this school this year. What an effort to get back to make that tackle. Never know, Ron. That's why you play the play till the end. And watch as his arm gets jerked right here. Didn't have the point covered. The point of the football. And that's why it came out. I mean, 18 inches away from taking over the lead with less than three minutes to play and they turn it over. Well, the Tennessee Titans will tell you about uh, that being that close to the goal line, the feeling. Maryland with one timeout left. As you can see what happened, Hill went across and made contact. Prior to the snap, offside on the defense. Five yards, still second down. We're coming up after the game, Sports Center with John Anderson and Carl Ravitch. The Hurricanes crush the orange. Rockman against Lewis, round by round update. And that's in the Sixers for the Eastern Conference Supremacy. Plus, for extended postgame coverage from here in Raleigh, turn over to ESPN News immediately following this ball game. Robinson trying 
to protect that football. Whaley will corner him. And the situation is it's going to be third down and long. And Maryland stands to get this football back with still lots of time left on the clock. Yeah, and a penalty, a five yard penalty where uh, they just jumped offside. So. So we'll take the time out with them. Two minutes, 36 seconds remaining. We'll be right back. Doug! Doug! Douglas! We're running dangerously low on beans! People love your beans, Doug. They love them. You want to go sell some tacos? Progressive knows small business makes big demands. Doug, where do we get a replacement chili pepper bulb? So we'll design the insurance solution that fits your business. It's a very niche bulb. It's a specialty bulb. When tough pain strikes, don't tough it out. Try this first. New Salon Pass Patch Large. They're twice the size as before with the power to target large pain areas. Make Salon Pass your first choice for tough pain relief. He sent me to... I was young and people would say the meanest things to me. It's really hard to be happy when someone's saying such cruel things, but when you learn to love yourself, I think it's a lot easier to take it because at the end of the day, you know you better than anyone else. Live your best life and after a while it will make you stronger and it will make things easier. Together, let's stop bullying. Choose kindness and shred hate. MLB, ESPN, and X Games are teaming up to shred hate. Learn more at shredhate.org. Hi, my name is Rick, but everyone calls me the Rick. I'm just cleaning up my couch here, trying to get some money. That's the price of ESPN Plus per month. $4.99 for exclusive live sports and shows. It's like, let me think. Do the math real quick. It's like seven, uh, yeah. It's like 17 cents per day. Not 19 cents in February, but. It's Canadian. Lamont Reed on the sideline, uh, one of those right in the middle of that very big defensive play as they ran down Parson and caused him to cough up the ball on like the half yard line. MC State recovers it in the end zone for the touchback. with the reverse and this is Edwards and Edwards as a flag comes down is going to be stopped just shy of the 25 yard line by Foxworth turn it down Ron you want the football back you don't want to exchange any more time that early, only 10 men on the field by Maryland. Cost him a timeout. Could cost him a timeout. Holding on the offense. Kelly is declined. Fourth down. Mike, that could come back to yeah. haunt them as well. But they still have enough time now. Yeah. 227. I think when they took it over in the first half, they had 120. Uh, and they moved down the football field and got a field goal. So, uh, Guess who's back beat? He's been doing it. It's Parson. And he gets an opportunity to right himself, as you see on the sideline, the long snapper working with the holder, making sure that they have their act down in case they get a chance to tie this ball here. Wobbly spiral. Parson on the run. Gathers it at the 38. And he's going to be hit immediately. That is really good special team coverage. 38 on the kick and only one on the return, and it's Troy Graham who was downfield. Well, you talk about that play, and I, I still, I commend Lamont Reed. I don't blame Carson. Uh, Lamont Reed just would not give up and made that tackle, and that uh, that's the biggest play, maybe the biggest play in the Atlantic Coast Conference this year. Up the far sideline, had been forced out of bounds. But when you turn and come right back in, that's legal. But pass was overthrown. And Hill did the, the smart thing. He just got rid of it. 
Sean Hill, 10 and 3 as a starting quarterback. Nick Novak, meanwhile, on the sideline, a redshirt freshman out of Charlottesville, continues to warm that leg up. Career long, as you can see, 51 yards. Got him coming over the middle. Has it complete short yardage to Jafar Williams. Now it's going to be third down. Bar Fisher on that tackle. We talked about EJ uh, being Henderson. coming up big on one side. Bar Fisher coming up big on the other side. Got a man out here in the flag, and Perry drops the ball. Perry had a short first down. Unofficially, that's like five drop passes by the Terps tonight. Two offensive linemen for Maryland are down. Crawford is one, and it looks as though Lamar Bryant, the entire right yeah. side of the offensive line, those two guys are down on one play. Now both of them on the right side, pass protecting, he both got, collide. You see Crawford got stepped on by the defensive lineman that was being blocked by Bryant. What a big drop by Bruce Perry. Sean Hill did a good job of coming back to Bruce Perry. His receiver, his number one receiver is covered. He was looking for the option route. Tight end. Sandy Worth, who has been the trainer at Maryland for 28 years, has been very busy tonight, and she's moving from one player to another on this one. They talk about this football game. Sean Hill has not had the benefit of receivers holding on to the football. And it drops. Very catchable footballs. And that was the last one that uh, would have been a first down. Fourth down. Does the whole season hinge on this play right here? We figure Ron that the new right guard and right tackle. So Corey Smith. They need to take it to the 49 yard line. Pressure from that right side. Got it complete. And that's enough for the first down at the 47 yard line of NC State. You figure new lineman coming into the ball game may make a mistake on the right side. Watch Price. And they do make a mistake. But Sean Price gets right through. He's right through to make the play, but Sean Hill stayed right in there. Sean Hill could see him, he could feel the pressure, and you gotta admire his cool. Stayed in the pocket and delivered the completion. Hill runs up, has this one complete, deep over the middle down at the 33 yard line to Gary. And that will move the chains as well. 137 left, good for 14 on the play. A lot of time again. Sean Price run again, yes. uh, getting pressure on that side. But Sean Hill, smart, moved up and slid to the right. 90 seconds left in the ball game. Hill out in the flat, overthrows this one, looking for the tight end Murphy. And that'll stop the clock with 127 remaining. 19 North Carolina State, 16 Maryland. If Maryland wins it, it is an outright ACC championship. They would head to the BCS and probably the Orange Bowl. Talked about Sean Price. Uh, he looks a little tired. Well, he's been working hard and he has been 100 percent on every play. Here he comes again. Pressure on the quarterback. And the ball is caught by Perry. <laughs> what an acrobatic effort by him at the 24. 11 yards in the play. Yeah, Sorry. Big players make big plays. He had to catch that one. So they moved the chains again, and he got out of bounds, which stops the clock with a minute and 20 seconds. And I'm telling you, watch Hill. He's really paying for it, isn't he? Price is uh, just on top of him every play. Sean Price right here.
Hill going to run it. Best decision to make. Good job by the secondary. They had him uh, covered. Chapman will step up and make the tackle. Now they got to hurry. No timeouts. Clock at 106, 105. Back to the line of scrimmage from a shotgun. And we go under one minute to play. Maryland with the second down. Got him at the eight yard line. First down and goal. It's Gary. Curl route. You can't say enough of both these quarterbacks tonight. Phillip Rivers on one side, Sean Hill on the other side, answering each other in the second half. Sean Locklear hustling on the field. I don't know. They didn't get the 11th or 12th player off, but they throw for the end zone. And it is touchdown, Gary. The flag that is down is going to be for 12 men on the field as they were trying to rush that defender off. They got Locklear on late. A label substitution on the defense. Player will come off the field. Billy has declined. Touchdown. Touchdown, Maryland. With 41 seconds left on the clock. <laughs> Novak with the extra point attempt, and he's got it. That makes it a four point ball game with 41 seconds left. Sean Hill, very confident quarterback, senior quarterback. And this is a young football team, only three seniors on offense. Of course, Sean Hill, the trigger man, will be gone, but uh, very calm and cool, looking over the field and finds Gary right inside the goal line for the touchdown. Pretty good speed on that football in front of Terrence Holt and Marcus Hudson. Mike, you, you made the statement just a moment ago, and it's not over. Rivers still nope. has 41 seconds. But look at the night these two quarterbacks have had. Yeah, they have really performed well. Both 27 to 41, 295 for Hill, 275 for Rivers. And Phillip Rivers still has one timeout to work with. And you, you think he feels a little better? <laughs> I mean, that's one of the most important. With 41 seconds to go, he does. He would like those to tick off. But uh, would you take, you talk about a bam bam oh. play. I mean, he's at the half yard line when he loses the football. And Lamont Reed, I'm going to tell you again, he's a great play. Coming up next, Sports Center, John Anderson, Carl Rabbit standing by. 41 ticks to get off the clock. 23 for Maryland, 19 for North Carolina State. Reed and Robinson, the two deep men. But this is going to be a pooch kick to the right side. Fair catch is called for and is made at the 25 yard line. Good smart move. Look at Parson. He, he's hugging everybody yeah. over there. <laughs> Bless his heart. He, he won't him. hug Ralph Preach. You know, he's staying away from him. <laughs> I have a feeling that if uh, Ralph... Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That's, Ralph wins that's this one. He, I think he will. Uh, well, Gary has had a huge game tonight also. Pottery and Gary have been really big guys in the, the great passing by I, both quarterbacks. I don't count this guy out either, Phillip Rivers. Throws this one away. Whaley with the continued pressure on the quarterback. Whaley for Maryland has been doing. It's been a well played game, Ron. Both teams, both teams well coached. And uh, two quarterbacks that uh, we're going to hear more about. Whaley has 11 tackles in this ball game tonight. 33 seconds left. Rivers. Gonna go long. Throws it into coverage. Intercepted. Jackson. Jackson. 
and now some oranges start to come down on the field from the student section uh, from Maryland and uh, they are asking please don't throw anything on the field but I have a feeling that 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 will go in vain as far as what they're attempting to get them to stop doing it. Twenty four seconds is what Maryland has to get off of the clock and they will turn this season into something that absolutely nobody thought could happen. Maybe somebody else to knock off the Florida State Seminoles but not the Maryland Terps. And then NC State with a good season two. Three straight coming into this game. Uh, played hard. Both these teams Again, fought their hearts out. Onto the field. Thank you. That's the end of the game. The final score, Maryland 23. So Ralph Regan enjoyed the bath because he guided his team coming back to his alma mater in his very first season to the ACC championship and what probably will be a trip to the Orange Bowl. And Adrian, let's go down to you. Congratulations to Ralph Regan on a beautiful job of coaching, not only this season, but obviously tonight. Two drives when you need it. Two-minute offense, end of the first half and end of the game. Well, you know, it seemed like nothing was going to go right for us tonight. You got to hand it to these kids that never quit. Hung in there right to the very end. The worst thing could happen when, you know, we, we think we're going to have a touchdown and we fumble the ball. They never got down. I'm so proud of these kids. I really am. I, I can't say so much about them. It's just... I, I just couldn't have, have a better opportunity to coach these kids. Sean Hill seemed to do on the field what you could not do from the sidelines. Rally these guys when they had to. Well, we kept our poise. We hung in there. Just kept fighting like we've been doing all year. Congratulations. Orange Bowl is a great possibility, Coach. <laughs> it should be. We're looking forward to being in the BCS. I told them I never played in the Orange Bowl, Sugar Bowl, Cotton Bowl, Rose Bowl. We'll see what happens. We're going to be in one of them. I know that. Enjoy victory number 10. Ron? Okay, Adrian, now for tonight's monster play of the game. As you might imagine, it came right at the end of the ball game with less than a minute to play. And Sean Hill, with all the poise in the world, says, hey, here is Gary, throws it in the corner. It is touchdown. And that's all that Maryland needed to come from behind still again and to win this ball game by final score of 23 to 19. Looking live at the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California, site of a holiday tradition that has brightened the new year for over a century. And on a beautiful Southern California afternoon, we welcome you to the Rose Bowl presented by City. Today, the Ohio State Buckeyes, Big Ten champions for the fifth straight year, face the Oregon Ducks, Pac-10 champions for the first time since 2001. What a beautiful setting it is every year here, Kirk, in the uh, Rose Bowl. I know uh, just before kickoff, uh, you tingle a little bit just waiting for the showdown, the Rose Bowl. Well, there, there are so many great venues in college football, and there's such an emphasis put on the BCS championship game. But every year, you and I are reminded, and our crew, we're reminded about what's unique about college football and the tradition, the pageantry. There's nothing like this venue, in my opinion, in all of sports. Everybody just sit back. Settle in. We watched a lot of football. And let's let Oregon and Ohio State bring it to you here at the beginning.